Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Hello everybody. Welcome to the channel for my live stream. I am Joseph F. Olsis. This is a quick test. Well, it might not be too quick. I am playing around with a lot of settings, trying a bunch of different streams. So I thought I'd come live and go through my feed. That'll come later. For now, I'll just give an update. Um, I had a door slammed on my hand not too long ago. Better now. Everybody seems to be healthy in the immediate area of friends and family, so I'm thankful for that. Not sure if this is going out live. But I am on social media, Addiction Master. I've been doing some role playing online, trying to get some tests going. Not sure if there's video problems or anything like that, but I have tr tried to play around with settings, so this is going to be a quick test. Maybe it'll go through properly or not. So everybody's been okay for the most part. Work has been troublesome. Part-time I did, I do some delivery, so it's been helping, but next week will be the, you know, you, you worry about these things. So I hope whoever can hear me can hopefully breathe easier. Hopefully we'll get through this well and if everything's going good. If not, Try to be strong. If you need help, reach out to somebody. These are weird times we're in. I can understand people's fears, concerns, and I'll probably get to that if this goes well and I go on to my streams and seeing what's actually being um, put on the feed. So I've been doing some role playing. I've been catching up on that. I did enough now that I have several adventures keyed up and ready, even some for experienced players, so it gives me some leeway. Once I finish an adventure or two, I'll have something in the bank, ready to go. I jury-rigged the um, chat window. I don't know if that'll work, but I've been trying other streaming systems and it's been pretty weird. I get, um, weird options. Like I try like Streamlabs OBS, uh, a couple of, what was the other one I tried? There's one I tr didn't go into cause it, it's a paid system, but generally they point to a, gaming channel so it's like i'd have to start a new page a gaming page and redirect my streams to that channel or that page and it seems weird that um i'd have to do a whole thing about it rather than i guess you could share it to your personal page but that's not an option on these streaming places so even both of them that i use I, you log in with facebook that seems fine and then it tells you um you know what options you have and it lists the pages that you have created so i have jf Alsis, joseph f Alsis, the mushroom king i made a channel called the deadly addictions creations keeping the tdac theme but there's a problem with getting it to go streaming right to my personal Facebook page. It's like, it's weird. It just seems like they don't want to do it. Maybe there's um, 
I don't know, maybe there's some laws about it in a way. I could see that they're being, um, because I know they don't like multi-platform stuff. I can't really get my finger on it. I didn't do a real deep dive. So I'm not actually sure. But I've been trying to use other streaming services, and I keep going back to OBS. I mean, it feels like I'm muscling my way through to do, to do these streams, but I guess I'm so familiar with it, it seems easy for me. And when I go into the other ones, they got like nice perks, like real specialized chat windows and widgets or whatever you call them and alerts you can put up on your screen. And it's more difficult to do that with just OBS. And then when you go to Streamlabs OBS, which is using OBS, they offer you the options some of the other ones do, but it comes down to the same thing. It'll redirect you to a certain page you created. So I would have to create a Deadly Addictions channel page, let's say. And then go use these other streaming services and they'll go right to that. Then I'd have to share the link to my personal page. I think that's the system that's used. I don't know. So this is just me playing around with settings, going live. It's been a while since I did this. My first one was a major COVID-19 update and I kept putting a tally of the numbers. I don't think I'll be doing that again unless I'm um, prodded to do it, I guess. Any feedback, but it is a heavy topic. It's big, it's out there, it's all over, especially my Facebook feed, like most people's, I'm going to guess right now. It is raining, so this is also a good test because I have problems streaming live uh, website stuff. Like, for instance, I have a role playing site that I use. And I've been doing D and D and superheroes. I tried to do a live stream with the superhero site on, with all the assets running, to show how gameplay would work. And I started having a problem dropping frames and stuff. So I went back to the beginning, playing black and white. <clears throat> Basically, have a little chat window open if this even works. I'm guessing it probably does. You know, you have to learn how to crop your windows and whatever. So it's like jerry rigged or MacGyvered. It is 9.06 p.m. 5.28.2020. And you're listening to the Deadly Addictions channel. Joseph F. Ulsis, Addiction Master on Twitter and most social media. So that is a little bit of an update. Things are okay. Money seems to be a worry in the future. If things don't get better... I'm happy that most of the people close to me are okay. There's been some, in, you know, outer perimeter people that are close to me. But I have a friend and his wife who work in a hospital, a big one in Manhattan. So I try to use them as a cross reference for some of the info that comes online. But I do see a trend, and that'll be probably one of the focuses here on this Facebook live stream. Now, normally when I plan to do this, it was an easy way for me to get practice talking, getting on the mic, and seeing how long I can keep going. And at first, it was more of a test for my endurance talking. I had done a lot of tests, and I, I talk about this probably a lot, and noticed that there would be a time limit where my throat would get itchy and it stopped bothering me. I never really practiced talking in a room alone in front of a mic. It's much easier when my friend's here and we do trailer reactions and we're just feeding off each other. Or even when someone calls in for that matter, although that gets a little weird with the delay and you know you don't get the social cues. But so far everything's been going good. So I went back to this. It's just a plain live stream. My audio... A little bit of uh, added chat box, something that I'll play around with from time to time. I was trying to do other streaming services, and I think they might work better with YouTube. 
So that's where I would probably start those tests. What I'll do next, a Facebook live stream, and I'll use some of these new services. So it'll give me the, you know, the fancy chat box that looks nice. It's transparent, so on and so forth. Anyway, like I said, I hope everybody's doing well. I know there's a lot of fear, confusion, a lot of anxiety, stress. There are conspiracies galore. There are people who are really, truly looking for answers. And there are assholes out there. And there is everybody in between. So hello, Facebook friends and family. And especially those who haven't hid my stuff. And, you know, no names. I just go through my Facebook feed at first. How you doing, Rob? So that was the theme, basically. I go through my Facebook feed. I see all the posts. I usually don't mention names. And then I carry the conversation to see what's interesting. And then double back on some things. I'll open up an article. I'll read it. Ta-da. All right. So I'll scroll through it real quick. And I've got... Cousins enjoying themselves. That's cool. Always awesome. Um, gaze upon the majesty of what lies beneath Jupiter's clouds. That's cool. So there's a science post. Hey, have you ever wondered what's beneath Jupiter's clouds? Wonder no more. Well, that's cool. I might double back on that. You know, I'd probably be able to put it in the window, possibly. I'm not sure. I could play a practice with window capture, but that might make me drop frames. It's all a big test and practice to get better at this. All right. I see a lot of people sharing um, DJ stuff and live streams. And I think they're really cool. A cousin of mine had this house music um, live stream she posted that she shared. And it was just at the right time. I was going to start cooking something and I left it on. So I hope more people would get on and do some live stream stuff. It's surely needed now. Um, what's this? Uh, American Psychiatric Association. Challenges mount for those with addiction disorders during COVID-19. No shit. Muhammad Ali. Always cool. Always mixed with a little sadness. The greatest of all time. We have an invention that helps you open the door without touching it. <laughs> uh, you'll see a lot of that stuff now. Right? Uh, there's one where there's a doorknob that has like properties that disinfects itself. This one is like a shoe thing, which allows you to, I guess, use your foot, open the door. Okay, something. Another science one. They are uh, artists are doing uh, reimaginings of historical figures. That's cool. Let's see. Managed to get a eh, heartfelt story, I guess. That's cool. Nothing wrong with that. this see what happens all right so we have uh blah blah, blah. yeah okay i kind of agree men should speak out i get it all right we have another 3d printing breakthrough that's always cool man 3d printing is going to be some crazy shit but, uh podcast to do streaming in the rain but at least i'm not getting the same errors i was getting the last time which is okay i'm just getting you know, like i'm dropping from the internet service or something like that which is should be okay for the most part if 
Facebook keeps up with the buffering and stuff like that. Because it says I'm connecting, but I'm getting disconnected, which is actually a good test. I'd like to see how stable this is in the worst conditions. And then as it gets better, you know, it give me more confidence in, you know, in how much I'll depend on doing live streams. Alrighty. Where were we? Going down. Yes, 3D printer stuff. I I love that 3D printer stuff. I mean, I wish they become so mainstream. It's like going to buy a printer. And maybe it will be soon. Would that be real cool? All right. Let's see. Uh, what is this? A movie thing? Uh, cool. Oh, look at that. It's my... Uh, it's my live stream. Oh, shit. Hey, Joe. Here's a shopping place I liked for a friend. Not bad. Everybody's hustling. Do what you got to do. Make your money. Save up. I'm ready for a rainy day. This is the time. All right. Okay. Biker stuff. All right, pretty cool. We all have a brotherhood, need to join, be a part of something. I get it. Mm, food. Oh, that always gets me towards the end of the podcast because I always forget to eat. And that becomes part of the fucking show. Because I'll just fucking go on and on. And then all of a sudden, I am fucking starving. I try to prepare myself now. So, we shouldn't have that problem. NASA releases satellite images of California super balloon from space. That should be cool. I can maybe double back on that. Um, okay, it's alright. Somewhat interesting. We have a, okay, Colin Kaepernick, bringing it back, sure, why not? There was that um, heinous fucking crime that almost, people almost got away with if they killed that black man. And it was fucked up because I didn't even hear about it, and most people didn't. And I think it would have gone unnoticed, and they would have got away with it until there was outrage. So at least they were arrested, and... At least I could seek justice and find the truth. Right, my friend and his kid. More power to you. It's tough when you have special need kids. Uh, what's the... Oh, this is always fascinating. Okay, so the, <laughs> the headline is... Well, actually, the comment attached to the article is... A bullet between the eyes is the only acceptable path for this sack of garbage. <laughs> and you know immediately it's a Trump article, so... Ta-da! Trump says there could be things we didn't see in Ahmad Arbery video. Wow, I was just talking about that. That's the... I believe that's the um young man who was jogging and was fucking hunted down and killed... For some bullshit story that I think is revealed to be a lie, but we'll let that play out in court, I guess. But yeah, you don't need a dumb buffoon clown president opening his mouth. It never works out for him. He's just fucking dopey. All right. Pet store thing. That's cool. Some of these 3D images are pretty cool. You move the mouse around and, you know, it kind of moves the image. I don't know what the fuck it does for your... uh. I guess it takes CPU power or something, but we'll see. All right. This is always fucking irritating. More than 12,000 Catholic churches in the U.S. applied for PPP loans, and 9,000 got them. Yay. These fucking 
disgusting pieces of shit churches applied for their fucking loans and they do shit. 9,000 got them. Fuck off. Uh, here's a meme. And it's hard to explain. You know, you explain. It says my face when people try to explain the Bible to me like it actually fucking happened. <laughs> yes, you know. What are you going to do? I believe because I believe. You know, all that shit. All right. The 5G conspiracy theory just got even more dangerous. Yeah. Let's fucking 5G conspiracy it. We can get back on that. Might be fun. That's fucking nonsense. Recovering from religion. Always give that a thumbs up. People who need to get out of religion, sometimes they need help. A little support. A little guidance. For some, it could be almost traumatizing. Realizing that it's all a lie. It's all bullshit. And there are organizations that will help you. More power to you. Quantum Breakthrough. A series of happy accidents might have upended our approach to constructing quantum computers. Yeah, I read about this. So this is interesting. And this might tie into the other thing I read that they have a, they made a breakthrough with a quantum chip in a cryogenic casing. I don't, I'm doing it off memory now. And it could be the thing that we've been, you know, uh, looking for. Because I think we've got it nailed down. We know what'll, how it'll work. We've got the systems to work it. But we can't get over the heat generation and power buildup in something so small. So they're looking to cryogenically freeze circuits or some process. And it also has to do with phys- physics and uh, superconductors. And they've been doing a lot of tests recently. I watched the lectures on finding new ways to get information to go through a computer smoother, less um, power, and all that stuff to get them more in sync. It's pretty interesting. An advertisement for Peaky Blinders. Something I haven't watched but is on my radar. Great actor. Probably a great cast. I don't know. But something I want to watch. All right, photo of an angel. What else do you see in this photo? I don't see an angel. I see bullshit, but it's very well done. It looks like a painting, Um, not a photo. Maybe Photoshop, like a filter on it, but that'd be cool. And it's a kid, so why not? Of course, there goes fucking family members who aren't framing him. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. I look up in the cloud. Sometimes I can see different shapes of things. Maybe it's just... Of course it's in your fucking head. It's all brain. It's all brain. It's all chemistry. Stop it. Yeah, good idea. You know what? I don't give a shit how stupid your beliefs are. Drawing. Even if you're not a good artist. Even if you're just connecting lines and making little patterns. Painting. Reading books, puzzles. These are good things to keep you occupied, keep your cognitive function sharp. They incite a or induce a slightly meditative stance, so it'll help you. So even me, I shit, I can't fucking draw for nothing, but I'll actually try to, you know, put my pencil to the paper. Well, I do that a lot because I write a lot, but sometimes I just want to draw little designs and. Horrible ones, but get a passion, follow it. All right, this is this is a this is a real difficult one. I'm looking at it's a family member posted about a nurse who's blowing the whistle on New York hospitals. Now, I've listened to this. It seems genuine, but my concern is twofold. One. It's edited and music is added to it. So right away, alarm bells go off. Now, that doesn't mean the nurse isn't genuine. It means someone is using it 
to get clicks and numbers and to get it populated rapidly. So what they'll do is they go, oh, you know, we found this this clip or this video of this nurse, you know, you know, telling all the blowing the whistle on everybody in, in a certain hospital or whatever. I'm going to take it. I'm going to edit it so we can get the Nazi phrase in in the beginning, and then in the midway, it's a, it's repeated. So there's like a fast edit that gives you the punch right in the beginning, and then it goes into the the woman's story, and then goes into you know it just repeats a little bit, but it's enough to get your attention, sort of thing. Now, the problem with it is. You don't know if she's a real nurse, because there was another one who did this, a home care worker, and that was revealed to be bullshit. She didn't have the proper gear on. It was just all nonsense. But I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt. Nurse has seen some shit, and it's mostly about um, them not giving a shit about minorities and... They are doing more malpractice than saving people. So fine, you know, she has a story to tell. My problem is the delivery system. When you trace back the link, it's to a comedy, a comedian link to some Facebook page, which is linked to media. And I'm, okay, I'm, I'm almost okay with that, but whoever put the music to it and cut it and edited it is a dishonest agent, in my opinion. But that doesn't mean the, the words aren't true, that her story isn't true, that there's not something to look at in there. But then you get to the comments. Right? It was always an interesting thing. When you look on the comments for this, you can see the schism that forms. But most people, I will agree, just try to generally accept what she's saying. And it's a true whistleblowing story. And it would be sad and get you kind of angry at what's going on, but we don't know yet. All right, another internet friend. Good luck on surgery. More power to you. All right, this is an interesting one. The The coronavirus truthers don't believe in public health. The woke right are sociopaths. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. I think everybody has a little bit of everything. Yes. Oh, this is a great one. The coronavirus lies evangelical leaders have told their flocks so they can keep making money off them. Okay, so this is that widespread evangelical, evangelical, whatever the fuck goes, and what they do is. They put on this fucking stupid fucking voice and their deep prayer to this bullshit God. And then they put pr- protections on people. But if you look at the growing list, they're all dying. They're all getting the virus and dying. There's no fucking prayer working. There's no, none of that bullshit is real. And the ones who get away with it, who keep going, just keep, you know, taking the money from people that fucking uh, confuse and scared Right. You know, it's like, oh, pray. I'm praying for you to be healthy. But when it's the evangelical, evangelical, it's no, I need money. God says I need a jet. Right. (laughs) So instead of praying and getting me a jet, give me your money. Right. But if, if, if you who are giving me the money need a prayer from me, you got to pay me also. It was such a fucking scam. And trickle that down, that logic. You just stop it already, right? Religion's done. Organized religion's a sham. Every one of them. You want to be spiritual, be religious. You know, let it come from within. I'm dying to play this, though. <laughs> Would I get, am I going to get called out for this? The um, devil's trying to give me the flu. Put your hand on that television set. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Put music to it. He received your healing. We know the coronavirus is breaking out in the United States. (laughs) For there is fear that is gripped in panics. 
regarding the coronavirus. The Lord woke me up about 2.30 this morning and he said, sit down, I'm, I'm going to give you the answer. You see, we're looking at the virus. The virus is nothing. Well, I know they don't want us to do this, but just turn around and greet two or three people. Tell them, you love them, Jesus you loves them. You should be them. in jail. Amen. You fucking crook. Gathering hundreds I of people, tell them to, to hug. church today. Why? Because I think the apostle is going to have the virus. If we die, we die for Christ. If we live, we live for Christ. So what do you lose? You the power of the government idiot. stops at that door of that church. You, know, you look around our church, you didn't stop these people from coming needed. You gave it your best shot. The goal, the tactic of the enemy stop us from worshiping. And I came today to declare victory over the virus. There's no plague is going okay, to come near you when boy. you're in him. And because of the administration that stands in this land, and because they have aligned themselves with Israel, therefore I give life to this nation and I give mercy. And God is about to purge a lot of sin. San Francisco Fuck is one God. of the first cities in the entire Monster, United States to maniac. actually go into self-quarantine. It is the district of a woman named Nancy Pelosi. Look at China. And Nancy Pelosi is a corrupt godless woman. state, so, uh, a godless government. Give our president supernatural wisdom. That's right, virus, you are illegal. I consider not symptoms in my body. When you take of this bread and put it in your mouth, the healing power will go through your body from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. Yeah. A pastor defying the governor's orders, okay. welcoming in several hundred people. Cancers are healed here. Uh, people yeah, cancers are healed here. People heal the HIV. You're such a fucking liar. Degenerate, disgusting fucking pigs. All of you dumb fucks. Katie Sackhoff, I shared her workout. I love what she's doing during the uh, crisis, whatever the fuck we're calling it. She's doing a lot of workout stuff that you can do at home with no space, no a lot of impact, you know, low impact type stuff. And I love her as an actress, and she's one of my favorites. So. Another American Psychiatric Association post. All right, that's cool. And here's another one. Okay, so this one is from another family member. And it's, uh, it, the logic is horrible. It might be true, but the logic is just fucking horrible. This is a emotional toddler, orange man bed, you know, Trump derangement syndrome, whatever the fuck you want to call it. And it's, the Biden accuser, Tara Reid's lawyer, is a Trump donor. Okay. The person obviously didn't read the article. This is this gets this is why you know you're just an angry toddler. As much as I think he's a clown, he's a fucking buffoon. This president's a fucking dipshit. And this could be false. This person trying to smear Biden, this sexual harassment. Could be real, could not be. That's not the case here. I'm talking about the fact that the person says, real fucking shocker, this was bullshit from the very beginning. Now, the article's title is Biden accused of Terry's lawyer is a Trump donor. So that person didn't read it. And it's obvious because when you read the article, he donated to Trump in 2016. But when you look at his record, He's defended six women from the Harvey Weinstein case. He defended and uh, um, I guess he worked for, you know, I guess he represented them in the Kavanaugh case. And he has a history of sticking up for women. He's actually went against Fox News and establishments like that. He's clearly trying to help women to a certain extent. Look. I'm not saying well, lawyers are probably shit to some extent, but this article only proves that the guy who was a Trump donor is not really looking at 
this smear working because if you just read the article, it's it's just blatant. Now, this has nothing to do with if she's correct or not, if her allegations are true. In my opinion, Biden's a fucking creep. He's, he's might, he might even be worse than Trump in certain ways. I have no trust in him. He's creepy with children, smelling people's hair, touching women. I could believe it's true, but in this case, you know, be skeptical. She has a valid claim, blah, 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 blah. But the article is clearly showing that this person has been doing things against Trump and they weigh way more in favor than just defending this person who's trying to get rid of Biden. It's clear. It's so evident. But you can't talk to certain people, you know. You mention it, you bring it up, and they've got their tribalism and their, you know, the people who are going to thumb up everything, just like it, agree with you. I try not to do that too much. As biased as I am, as much as I love friends and family, it's something I try to do is be honest, truth over feelings. And sometimes it's worth it, you know, sometimes it'll be worth it to go in and, you know, fuck with people. So what I'll do is I'll just put a smiley face. I'm certain people in this uh, chat right now, or people, because I just outed you because you're the only person in my live chat, likes to post fucking nonsense. But, you know, getting into deep discussions is not going to happen because they just get their fee-fees hurt. So you just leave a little smiley and that lets you know you're being, you're being ridiculous. So we have another internet friend. This is cool. I'm not into dancing, but that's cool. All right. More cooking, cooking, back to back cooking stuff. Damn it. I'm guessing there's a wife swap show out there. I guess, yeah, I think I've heard of it, right? Yeah. This mom from this family has to stay with that mom for that family. I get it. I almost didn't get the reference. To... Oh, kids are cute. Yes, indeed. Especially ones with ladybugs. that catch ladybugs. That's adorable. All right. So it's 9.37 p.m., 5-8-2020. I am Joseph F. Ulsis. You're listening to the Daily Addictions channel. I am Addiction Master on most social media. I have a Discord, YouTube channel, Patreon, Teespring for merchandise. I just started that stuff up. But they're out there. Uh, on if this was YouTube, I'd say I'll go look in the description, but I didn't put anything in this description because this was just testing the waters. All right, so let's see. I think I'm hitting the bottom here. It'll probably give me some more, but if I recognize them, I'll double back and see if there's something interesting that I passed by before. That's how this usually works. More food. Fucking food, man. Damn it. Damn it. <laughs> you know what's hilarious? There's a post and it's, you know, the fucktards who share the pandemic nonsense. And yeah, I'm talking to fucking you, Mr. O. Oh, I'm a fucking gun toting rights fucking person such fucking ridiculousness and then three three days later and I wasn't even involved because I, I didn't even I might maybe I laughed at it I don't know but put a little emoji or something but I don't think so I think I was staying away from it and three days later they come around and go I want to be very clear very clear on why I shared that 
And then the person went on to muddle the water even further. There's no clear, there's nothing clear about it. There's this wishy-washy, I believe to do, I believe this, or I believe that. There's just uh, insanity in this post. And it was supposed to be clearing up why they shared the pandemic nonsense. And as much as I try to fucking get into it and have fun, you know, you can't. Some people, you just can't. And since my Facebook war of 2017, 2018, it's clear, you know. Don't hurt people's fifis. They can't take it. Wah. So I just don't bother that much no more. But now I get to do this. Like I said, not mention who they are and fucking shit on the uh, stupidness of the internet. All right. Oh, by the way, you want to fucking become a little fucking better critical thinker and to some extent, here's what you do. If you're going to post something, don't. <laughs> just don't. It's just that simple. All right. Did I, does this make sense to me? Yeah. Don't post it. I agree with this. Yeah. Don't post it. Cause you're wrong. You're probably wrong. You don't realize it. The logic is faulty. It makes no sense. You dive in deep and you get exposed for the propaganda, fear mongering puppet that you are. This is everybody. This is me. I don't do it as often, but yes, you know, everybody's susceptible. Here's a cosplayer who's really cool. Wow, I mean, could we know this person for like 10, what is it, 2012 was a Comic Con? Eight years, maybe? Still doing her thing. That's cool. I give them credit, those cosplayers. All right. So, we'll go back. Eat and eat, yeah. There's the only thing you could do is eat, but just eat, you know, properly. Just like eat cardboard and and like oatmeal with no flavoring and stuff. Now nah, I get it though. But if you have a little bit of land and you know, I mean, you have a backyard or something. Always good, you know, take a walk and you don't have to be too crazy with this and too flippant. You know, you could be somewhere in the middle. You know, yeah, I got to go to the store. I got to do my stuff. You know, I got to put my mask on, stay six feet away. I want to go out in the backyard and get my heart pumping a little bit, do a little bit of exercise. And then we all have to worry about the people that we're concerned about, so... These conspiracy things are just nonsense. Right, I'm doubling back now. And there's a new one, but I don't know those friends of friends. So I'm going to smoke a bowl. That's right. Tonight's drug of choice, as most nights, is weed. Tiny bit of tobacco. It's above average, but not the highest of quality in these days. Can't afford that. Got to be careful. I did smoke my vape right before I started. That's always fun. I have a Puri 5, Deja Vu. If you're listening, I'll take the endorsement and the free products. I'm going to hear a light. I don't know what I could mute, I guess. <sighs> All right. Seven subjects that should be taught in U.S. schools. That might be interesting, but okay, I'll, I'll double back. All right, that I've seen before. Okay, see, this one's not too interesting because it's like 
looking at pictures and I guess I could share the pictures. You know, I could maybe I could no, nah, this would be opening up another window though. Let me let me try it. I'm gonna look at the article and see if it's worth talking about and if there are ways I could put it into the screen. By the way, this will be going on live Facebook and I'll probably upload it to YouTube. And this is from I Love Fucking Science, by the way. Pretty cool uh, site. I think they're like an aggregator. They get science articles from around the world and put them on their site. Yes, we know it's the largest planet. So apparently it is a color enhancement photos, uh, thermal infrared emissions, and they're playing with the RGB filters, ultraviolet, and some other different contrasting. So basically, they're taking the best pictures they have and augmenting them in certain ways. Now, this is awesome for the flat earth people because they all insist that... um. That uh, all NASA photos are doctored and it's all bullshit. It's all fake. We never went to the moon. We don't have satellites in space. We don't have a space station up there. And yeah, the Earth is flat. So, okay, whatever. So this article is not really one to share that much except to say that they have really good pictures of Jupiter that they've enhanced and you can get to see beneath the clouds in certain circumstances. So it's pretty interesting, fun. Uh, This one I've seen, but it doesn't have much to talk about and get into. Uh, What is this? Uh, Challenging. Okay, I I don't know if that's good to talk about, though. Another thing, innovative, but not really worth to go through as an article to read or to connect with. Again, another thing that's mostly images and something I'll probably go back and read and look through, but not enough. What? I don't get it. I'm looking, going through my feed, and I'm closing things and hiding them just so I don't go over them again when I go back up and down. And it's, sometimes it's kind of a little bit of a delay, and it'll, like, say... You want to hide them or report them or something like that? You know, sometimes you hit the wrong button, but I'm trying. Anyway, this is silly. Silly Billy. Oh, this is going to be a reminder for tomorrow. Hmm. Interesting. See, a lot of things are going to be in um, the cloud or what you call it. It'll take the pressure off a lot of CPUs and the the transfer of information. So a lot of these 3D printing um, companies and the breakthroughs is having this information in a cloud, which means eventually, you know, you you go to your friend's house, he has a 3D printer, You go to the cloud, you make a part for something, so on and so forth. And this is focused on the COVID-19. So that's pretty interesting. You know, innovation, you know, things happen. And sometimes that's when humans are at their best. You wouldn't know it from Facebook, though, from the fucking retarded posts people keep fucking putting out there. 
Okay, another one, another cool article I'd be into, but it's images. It's just going to be a drawer on opening windows, and it's not really, you know, shareable. Usually I find a cool article to go through and I read. I mean, unless I want to go into co like COVID-19 stuff. Oh, sure. I'll just, just fucking, it's all over the place. I have no troubles with that. I'm trying to see if I can avoid that at first. You know, we've got that nurse and the pandemic. you got them using, piecing together all these fringe doctors and nurses and and yeah, you know, you want to take it with a, a little bit of charity and say, look, you know, just give you people stories. There could be some truth out there. But until there's concrete evidence, we have to trust experts to some extent and do our best. We do have the Flynn articles going around where he's getting off by the DOJ, and there's a lot of bullshit behind that. I'm a little half and half on this. He's obviously still a creepy fuck and deceitful liar, but I thought from the beginning that the Democrats did shady shit, so I'm not surprised. Uh, Cuomo, yeah, you know what? People like to suck Cuomo's dick, but... He's just as corrupt asshole as any of them. He puts on a good show. Uh, what does this say? Cuomo was slow to lock down his state, cut Medicaid and other public services in order to prevent billionaire tax increases. Yeah. How about not buying the fucking propaganda and actually doing a little research, people? You know, you could look at his fucking promo when he's cleaning the fucking train and go, oh, this guy's good. He might be the candidate in 2024. Look at his record. In the middle of a fucking virus outbreak, he sends people to nursing homes. You mean thousands of people died because of that? I think he's rated the worst in the country for taking too long to lock down. And he's cutting Medicaid and other public services. And it says here he did all this as his state became the world COVID epicenter. Ah. Uh. Oh, and then it says, but because he gets to go on TV with his brother, Libs thinks he's great, you know, libertarians. Well, you know, as long as it's orange man bad, you know, vote blue no matter who. Fuck off with that, too. Uh, Cuomo's approval rating show politics is getting more and more shallow. Of course, everybody's in panic mode. You know, you got to get Trump out. No. And Bernie just lets them fucking walk over him and cheat him again. But, you know, whatever. Gotta go to the fucking, I guess, Biden now. Not me. I don't get shamed into voting for people. I have integrity. And I'll weigh the options and I'll look into it to see what's best or not. I mean, the only way I see him gaining any favor with me if he, like, picks Tulsi Gabbard as his running mate, you know, because then his cognitive functions will fucking decline and he'll be replaced by her, so that'd be cool, but Biden can fuck off, and so can anybody who tries to fucking pretend that he's a fucking what we need, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, how about fucking getting Flint's water fixed? It's like fucking Jesus Christ. Spaghetti monster. Whatever the fuck. I don't, just don't fucking get it, man. This is so stupid. That was a cool dog thing where the dog plays hide and seek. And he actually goes on the wall, hides his head in his paws. That's pretty cute. And then he's got to go look for her. That's <laughs> adorable. Ah, funny dog stuff, kid stuff. It always lightens the mood. So, a uh, good idea to go get your favorite 
comedy clips, watch them. No, okay, so in the chat, I have a friend who's uh, posting. Uh, I think they all should get rid of them. All money hungry, non American supporters. They're all corrupt. I agree for the most part. There's no clear good side anymore. We should just vote to get rid of Trump, even though they're, they're all scum. See, I disagree. Because how I see this is Trump's a better face on the problems of politics. He can't avoid looking like a buffoon, acting like an idiot, showing how truly corrupt people are and how hypocritical every division is. Republicans, conservatives, lefty, Democrats. You get Biden in there or like Obama, right? Obama. Great speaker, really knew how to talk in front of the mic, great statesman, horrible president. His bullshit is just passed over because he's so nice and charming. He gives people hope, but it was a scam, right? Now, that's more damaging than Trump for four years decimating the Republicans' uh, integrity. Even when you look at the conservatives and the values they had with family, this, and as much as they hate the religious right, they would stick to their guns. But for Trump, they let everything go. So I look at it as Trump is a better face on the problems of political landscape. That's why he was elected, right? No one wanted to vote for Hillary, even though she was exposed for cheating Bernie and the whole corrupt DNC. So they chose a fucking reality show riverboat captain as the fucking president. And it doesn't matter popular vote anymore because of the way this shit works. You want to destroy the corruption in politics? Keep Trump in. Now, yeah, you risk the stupidity. You hope he has a great council of people that are just giving him good information, which he's obviously not listening to. But in my opinion, I want to. I'm a free speech absolutist in a way. I, I want to hear about the idiots who believe that the Holocaust is not true, or you know, I want to see the people who want to kill gay people. They have. I want to see all the stupid opinions. I want them out there. I want them exposed. So. It's hard for me to say that we have to get him out because, to me, he just keeps putting a bad face on it. I don't want to go back to being deceptive again. Obama got in. He had full majority, whatever you call that, House and Senate, however the fuck that works. No filibustering. Could have got Medicare for all passed. Didn't. Compromised. Took a Republican plan. And he compromised every step of the way took us from two wars to seven and Obama ran out of bombs but no one complained it was what was going it was he's he's a president look how well he speaks look how good he looks but not with Trump every time he opens his mouth like he said makes himself look like an asshole That's better, in my opinion, because that will just keep exposing the flaws in politics. I don't want a deceptive, nice face on everything. And then it's still the corruption is still there. Now they're looking at illegal bribery. Uh, the Democrats and Republicans are both bought off and serving their donors, not us. So that's the basic gist right there. And votes aren't going to matter in the long run because of how they keep 
I don't know what the word is, if they gerrymander or how they redistribute red and white blue states and how electoral votes are collected, you'd have to get rid of the electoral vote and you need ranking voting. So rank voting would help because I can vote for Bernie. And then my second choice is Tulsi. And then my third choice is Yang. And if Bernie doesn't make it, my votes go to Tulsi. You know what I mean? That would eliminate this, oh, third parties are ruining everything type thing. So in my opinion, I don't mind Trump getting reelected, although I don't like him and he's bad. Orange man bad, yes. But I think there's too much on each side. There's Trump derangement syndrome. You got fucking maniacs on the left. You got maniacs on the right. If it's up to me and he crosses the line in North Korea, sucks a little fucking Korean dick, makes us safer, fine. Give him props for that. But yeah, you don't defend this fucking buffoon to the, to a certain extent. But I don't know. This there's so many lawsuits that happen that just go go by like um New York was sued, they lost, a couple other states lost because they were you know taking people off the voting and the ballots and stuff like that. But just like the DNC when they were found to be corrupt, bankers that we lent out, we bailed out bankers, we bailed out Wall Street, and we shit on every human working person that doesn't meet a certain threshold. This is disgusting. We could spend billions and trillions of dollars on wars, whatever, and pretend we're going around the good guys, but we can't cut it back by sixty billion and cure homelessness and cure fucking give everybody health insurance. We can't take another twenty eight billion or whatever and give free college to everybody and pay all the student debts and all these loans. How about paying fucking teachers what you what movie stars make? How about training police officers in jujitsu and getting them certifications that are harder than getting a barbershop license? If you want to be a hair cutter, you got to get more training than a police officer. There's all these problems are systematic, sy- systemic. It all comes from this fucking money hungry political system. And that's how I look at it. So I'll take this ugly face and further destroy the Republicans and whatever integrity they have left. I think a third party is needed, but what do I know? Where's uh, Ross Perot, right? <laughs> All right. You know, I don't even like seeing Bernie talking and stuff he had he had the opportunity and he i just i don't get it independent all of his life now he's trying to help the democrats just it's fucking sad but you know i understand what people do and why they do it uh former mayor pete booty judge what a corrupt con man that was. He can go fuck himself. So basically, the the thing on this fling character is it's Barr doing in uh, Trump a favor by saying, look, you know what, you don't have to um, pardon him. We'll just drop the case. And they have enough power and enough in that system to let it go by. It doesn't stop the problem that he was a liar and he lied. It's almost like that bullshit argument like, oh, he didn't know he was being taped. Fine, okay, he didn't know he was being taped, but he still said what he fucking said. Do I believe in socialism? Well, you're gonna have to def- <laughs> this would have to go into a big defining criteria, but yes, to a certain extent. For instance, if you wanna if you wanna make capitalism your prime building block, which I agree with, it needs to be supported with socialist agendas. So for instance, everything you think you like that you need is socialism. Police, garbage men, the list goes on, streets, everything you can imagine is socialism. So 
socialism as in the far right end of it, the Marxism stuff. No, socialist agendas and programs, desperately yes, because they are what shore up this capitalism environment, right? You need that. You need strong unions. And Reagan destroyed that. Clinton's destroyed it even further. Everybody's just shitting on everybody. So capitalism is failing. So it's more like socialist agendas. Yes, I think it's very important. But no, if you're going to twist the definition of it to fit a certain criteria. So it's a semantics game. But just for the general chat, you're typing in chat. Yes, I believe in the programs. Yes, totally. You do too. Everybody does. Until the propaganda gets in your head and then you just fucking think, oh, no, Russia and all these fucking, this bullshit. It's all nonsense to get you tricked, muddy the waters, because you've been thriving off socialism all your life. It's one of the best things that's ever happened to this country. And it is supportive. That I'll agree with. You set it up with capitalism, shore it up with socialist programs, people can get free health care, whatever, so on and so forth. You get real strong unions. But what happened was we decayed the unions. Capitalism ran amok. And now you got this agenda to squash socialist programs. So people want to cut Medicare and Social Security. It's just a fucking money agenda by the donors and all the high payroll people. You know what I mean? So there's my input on that. Cause just do a little research, go look and see what's a socialist program right now. And you'll see lists, you'll see hundreds, maybe hundreds of things that you'll go, Oh my God, really? Fire department is a socialist. Pro- oh my, really? And just the list goes on so much that, You just give up and you have to go, okay, so I do like it. But again, you don't want to go too far one way. And that's how it'll be described as. And that's how they'll smear Bernie Sanders or smear people is they find this semantic argument, this agenda, and they'll run with it when it's also dishonest bullshit. It is 10.07 p.m., I am Joseph F. Alsis. This is the Deadly Addictions channel, talking to my Facebook friends and family. And eventually I'll be uploading it to YouTube, so hello there. 10.07 p.m. You know where your children are. Yeah, I get it. We don't know. We're all stuck home, right? Not that I have kids, but you get it. Oh, yeah, you got the robot dogs out and stuff. That's pretty cool. Like, I saw a thing that said um, that when the hacked emails from the DNC, the whole Russiagate thing is bullshit for that particular subject. There was never any data transfer information that was ha- it was hacked. It was the evidence points to a download, which means someone put a, a thing in the drive, gave it to WikiLeaks. That evidence has been examined, has no traces to Russia, but they piggybacked on it to create this fucking Russia gate nonsense. Now, it doesn't mean Trump's not a corrupt fucking asshole and he should be in jail. Whatever, but I'm talking about certain, when you analyze certain parts of the Mueller report, you wonder why certain things don't add up, why the Republicans are like, whoa, you know, you can't do this because the Democrats really played the game. See, they both know they're corrupt. Pelosi and them, they all signed off on the torture. They can't be outed because you can't put any war criminals in jail. You can't put the bankers in jail who bankrupted everybody. You can't put the Wall Street idiots who fucking fleeced us. Those people don't go to jail. But try to go fucking rob $500 from somebody. Steal their credit card. You'll be in jail. 
So the Democrats are going, doing this shit, and the Republicans are like, hey, guys, you're just as corrupt as us. Don't make us fucking, you know, expose you too. And that's what they're doing. That's why there was that little bit of, okay, you want to impeach Trump? Fine. Yeah. You can impeach him. He's impeached, but we'll overturn it. And now we're going to show how screwball the Democrats were in going after the orange man. And there's legit stuff there. So I don't play fucking favorites. I never will. I mean, maybe I grew up, I could say, I grew up Republican, became Democrat as I got older. And at some point I said, fuck them all. I I give no fucks no more. And that was in the last couple of years. I still believe I, you know, to go and vote, but I don't bother people no more. I don't find it worthy of an argument to convince somebody to go vote. Look, I give no shits because this is garbage. Wow, this has become a Facebook political rant brought to you by the Deadly Addictions channel, sponsored by Puri5, Deja Vu, Vaporizer. So I think those are the dominant things. You got the COVID-19 and the um, the Flynn stuff, which ties into the Mueller, Mueller, whatever the fuck that is. And, you know, let's forget about how we're fucking over Venezuela, pretending we're, you know, not going into their resources. How many countries are we in? The 900 and something bases we have around the world that are known and the other couple of hundred that are secret. That we have countries whose oil that we have surrounded, you know, but hey, you know what? We're going to bring liberty. Let's get lied into another war and not hold anybody accountable. Let's dance with George Bush, the war criminal on fucking Ellen. And then obfuscate the fucking reason why people were pissed off at her. Oh, it's class and friend Republicans. No, no, no. It had nothing to do with that, okay? The guy knew he knew it was a lie, went and killed half a million fucking people because we were all crazy about getting revenge. Fine, I get it. But once that lie is revealed, once the evidence comes out, just fucking put them in jail. I don't worry about murder hornets. Get the fuck out of here. More shit to, you know, distract people. Fucking murder hornets. Well, I guess no. Maybe uh, I'm in a city, so it's a little different. I could see being upstate or, you know, I could see, okay, so I could see that being like, because I remember when I was younger, it was the bees. When I was younger, it was fucking movies. They were big movies about swarms of bees, killer bees migrating from other places. And now you hear, well, the bees go, we're dead and we're losing them. So, you know, hornets, it's just another fucking. No. I love it, though. I love the praying mantis eating the fucking head off the hornet. He's like, I got you murder her, murder on it. And just fucking does his fucking praying mantis style kung fu on it and just fucking locks it down and chews its head off. It's epic. All right, what do we got here? Well, that's in a different language. Uh oh, looks after those. 5G fucking towers.
That was a great fucking fun conspiracy rabbit holes to go down. But they're pointless, by the way. Oh, I got pictures of birds on a 5G, of course. Well, it's fucking signals boosting out of that fucking thing. What did Obama know and when did he know it? Well, just assume he knew fucking everything. I forgot what fucking speech it was, but just the reports back of um, that we were torturing people and he comes on the podium and he's like, we torture some people. You know, like, like it's okay and those people are fucking get away scot-free and get to fucking do $500,000 fucking speaking engagements and millions of dollars in fucking payouts from banks and buy $14 million homes. Fucking ridiculous. Oh, boy. A lot of conspiracy nuts out there. It's tracing, not tracking. And what they want to do is people who are test positive, they want to trace back their steps and movements and who they interacted with to further get a hold of this virus in general. But there are other articles about Bill Gates, which is bullshit. And not saying that he hasn't killed fucking millions of people in some other country or 150,000, whatever the fuck it was. But tracking systems in our body, well, I mean, that's probably going to happen eventually. Because you'll be able to just scan things and buy them. There are already people putting Wi-Fi hotspots in their leg. It's inevitable to a certain extent. But all you people who worry about these things, you're already lost. You keep People keep crying about being tracked. or You're already tracked. They don't need anything. They track you. They can listen to you. Everything. It's already done. You gave up your rights. The guns mean nothing. You know, you, we gave up our rights to Obama. They can arrest us now. No more, um, whatever the fuck that clause is in one of the amendments or something, modus, something, whatever. So, no, tracking, this tracking nonsense is bullshit. They don't need it. But eventually, this all will be part of life. Because that's just what's going to happen. We're going to integrate with technology to a certain extent. It's just inevitable. And there'll always be conspiracies and this and that. But it's tracing that is an important thing. You know, when you look at the numbers of this virus, it it went from like nine confirmed and a month later, 7,000, month later, whatever. And now we're past 70,000. This is within months, weeks. So... Yes, it's a concern. It's the methods they want to use. However, am I worried about tracking stuff? No, it doesn't matter. Your phone, you got a cell phone, you're fucked. Your nearest cell phone, you're fucked. The cameras are everywhere. There's no need for it. Just like this bullshit about don't take my guns away. First of all, read the fucking amendments. Read the fucking laws. You'll realize that you've only heard half the story. And if you were honest enough, you'd go, okay, well, I could see... No, I don't have a right to have fucking AR-15s and all that shit. So it's the same type of mentality. It's like you'll read a little bit of something that makes sense and it's infringing on your rights and no, they can't track me. And I understand the argument about giving up our rights. No, but, but it's happened already. We've lost that battle. And then what did Obama do? He handed over that same clause, re-upped it for Trump. So, you know, what what is this bullshit? 
However, if you tell me I walk outside my door, a drone flies down, gives me an injection, cures me with some virus, updates my nanobots in my body, or whatever the fuck it is, I'm not worried about that. Yes, and I do have a concern about our rights, you know, and, um, you know, cops arresting people for gathering and stuff like that. Yeah, I do have my problems and issues with it. However, this is not the time to analyze it in that way. Let's get a handle on things. Let's get some more information on this virus and what is actually going on. And then... You know, we shore up our shores later. We fill in the blanks and figure out where the mistakes happen and uh, those type of things. But I don't see a reason to go crazy about uh, fucking sp- conspiracies about tracking us and stuff. What's the point? No, you're right. What would you do if your six-year-old son or daughter tested positive for COVID-19 and was taken from your home to a quarantine center? Plan ahead. All right, so to give him some information. Um, all right, this guy is fucking annoying the shit out of me. You know, people wake up, they think they get woke all of a sudden and have this insight sorry it's not insight it's just fucking the way human brains work just susceptible to stupid beliefs and idiotic fucking claims as anybody else I wonder if the rain will be picked up hitting the air conditioner. Sometimes it sounds like really loud, like rocks are hitting it almost. Alrighty. I haven't like found something to get really deep into. I just want to keep going into this nonsense, but... Hey, it's what's on people's minds. It's people are worried. And I get that too. I, I get the whole uh, smart to be worried about things. Keep on the ball. Uh, uh, someone makes a point here. I didn't spend my childhood in barbed wire and closed internment camps so I could listen to grown adults today cry oppression because they have to wear a mask at Costco. I see the logic in that. I mean, now, by the way, the government has not mandated you wear a mask when you go to these stores. It's the stores who mandate it. And that's perfectly fine, by the way. They want to have a thing where you stand here, you have to come in with a mask. It's not the government enforcing it and fucking with your rights. It's the establishments. Well, maybe it varies state by state, and I could be wrong. Okay. But on that topic, you know. And like you see these fucking red herrings, or you, you, they come, these alarm bells go off when you read something, and the guy's got this argument, but you can't figure out what's wrong with it. Uh, you know, he, he's very skilled in his craft because there is a way of talking and manipulating and then he'll say something like you know infringing on our rights to religion freedom of religion well okay you really think the rights are being infringed because they don't want 300 people gathering in a church two weeks later the pastor dies 17 people are infected another 30 are infected because they walk around and go to I mean, yeah, when does it become a right to other people to be safe, right? So stop with this, oh, I'm given this right, and rights, what are they given? Yeah, they're given. Of course they are. It's a social contract. We make, we made it when we're born and we grow up and we're taught by our parents. It's a social construct. Uh, 
Well, that goes to, so someone asked, um, how about the cops beating people up for wear, not wearing one? Okay, so I would have to assume it's true. So let's say, yes, uh, someone provides a link and there's cops beating up people without a mask. Well, cops beat up people all the time. And we know they were fucking shill for the governments and then the system that's corrupt already. So it's okay for them to go beat up little kids and people uh, occupy Wall Street to blow off Native Americans' arms and blow their eyes out with these rubber bullets, hit them with tear gas, get beat the shit out of these people. So no, it's not surprising that they're beating up people for not wearing one. Not surprising at all. I think any oppression from the cops is bullshit. I think there should be a a community leader who goes to the police and tells them how his community should be run. Meaning, you get a community leader who comes and says, look, if you see uh, two black guys with a hoodie uh, after 10 at night, you know, you don't bother them. You might want to monitor them. So there's also preparation on how to handle things but they're not giving a fuck anyway so it's more like let's curb this they don't want whatever happened in hong kong or france those big riots and stuff that happens here it's it's over for the these i don't know what do you want to call them regimes or this system that's in place so they stamp down on it real quick now no i don't agree with beating people up and not wearing one however I don't know the circumstances. If if you're coming to barge into my house without a mask on, do I have, can I stop you? So what if you're, I got 18 people waiting in line six feet apart in a store and you want to come in with your mask off? All right, no, it doesn't mean you want to beat that person, but where's the threshold between, you know, the circumstances, the context of what happened? I don't know. But I didn't particularly see... I'm not surprised, though. These cops beat the shit out of everybody. You know, they're not there for the people in that case. You know, an order comes down from... I don't know, you posted the mayor. Mayo. Mayor. Uh, order comes down. I mean, it can be stopped anywhere down the chain. Right? Cops can say, oh, you know what? No, we're not... You know, arresting people. People put their foot down, and but what happens is, good good people go into the police force. They leave, or they get corrupted. And I don't mean corrupted like a mustache twirling villain. But you go with the tribalism. You go with the groupthink. You got the blue line, and it's what matters. And it's these people are protecting you out there. So, hey, you know what? I'm gonna get out my aggression. I'm gonna beat the shit out of these people not wearing masks or occupying Wall Street or protecting the water and the pipelines. Stamp it down quick. Put an end to it before it spreads and becomes a movement. So, I don't know. Well, I think it's shitty if they are. But I, I really have to know the context. It's a little weird. You know, I try to bring it to my personal and then expand it. But somewhere in there, it's like, okay, if you want to stand six feet apart with eight people who don't care about not wearing a mask and wearing a mask, fine. But if everybody there doesn't agree that they don't want to be less than six feet apart, that guy could leave. So could it be the cops could have just told everybody to leave and let these people get together in groups that... Don't want to wear a mask. I mean, I guess. And then I guess you could use the tracing. Trace it back and just monitor their little fucking cult. Whatever the fuck they're doing. Because these protests are bullshit, right? You know, if a bunch of black guys showed up with machine guns, closing down places, you know. It would be different. But as long as they're white and they want to bring their Nazi flags and their fucking Confederate flags and. Hey, you know, free speech and all that. I'm fine. I know. Like I said, I'd rather be exposed and 
see these idiots out there. But when you're talking about health, I mean, I don't know. Uh, someone's health is more important, but beating people up, no. I mean, I don't, I don't think cops should be fucking beating anybody up for that matter, you know, in general. All right, what's this? Monkey is angry for bringing milk late. There's a little another article. Uh, yes, we've seen that. No deep dives, but I had a little interaction from the chat, so that's been pretty cool. It's 10.30 p.m., 5-8-2020. I am Joseph F. Olsis. This is the Deadly Addictions channel. Oh, I think you're talking about, I think someone in the chat is saying about the mayor. I'm remembering something about a mayor. I don't remember the whole story, but I, I think you're, I got an idea, I think what you're alluding to. I have been streaming for an hour and 31 minutes. Yay. I got enough confidence now that I don't worry about my voice talking anymore. I'm more concerned about the streaming aspect. So this will be another test to see how strong the signal is, how consistent it is. It'll also give me an idea about the weather because I got a not so good signal and I'm on Wi-Fi. And I don't mean Wi-Fi in the house. I mean a Wi-Fi hotspot. So I've learned that I can't do the online gaming live, but I could probably record it. So I can still open up my broadcasting software, go on the site, play the game with people, use the game map and all that stuff, and then end the recording and kind of upload it. But streaming live right now is out of the question until I can get a dedicated internet service. It is a little cool in Brooklyn, New York, raining. I would open up the weather thing, but who really gives a shit? But if you're across the country, across the world, it is a rainy, cool, I wouldn't say chilly, though. Maybe upstate. Facebook is basically COVID-19 related shit, conspiracies, and the Michael Flynn. I guess those are important, but what about the fact that it's been revealed that we fucking backed the wrong people and they covered up a lie that this guy gassed his own people? All that's going on right now is fucking people testifying and stuff. Okay, I'm in and out. Thanks for the feedback. That helps. Yeah, I notice on my live stream, it'll tell me the health of the stream. So I got, I got an idea when my signal's dropping low. But that's why I do this, because... If I do it long enough, you know, I get an hour and a half, two hours. When I re-listen re to it, I can get a gauge of how consistent the signal is. Oh, well, you got snow upstate. Oh, fuck that. That's nuts. Oh, man, so it is fucking probably chilly. Yeah, so it's probably making it worse. You know, snow up there. Rain here, cloudy, I'm on a Wi-Fi hotspot, not even in the house. So this is actually a good test. You know, for all the multitude of friends and family who listen. I'm a hero in these dark times, I know. There's no need to praise. Given banger content, 
<laughs> Megalodon, the shark that lived about 60 million years ago. Oh, it can't be. How is that possible? If the Earth is only 6,000 to 10,000 years old, that's not possible. So that's all fucking lie. TV pastor Jim Baker suffers stroke. Wife and son confirm Jim will be back. Oh, Jim, 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 Jim. Oh, Jim, 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 Jim. You jackass. Oh, they're getting busy upstairs. They have banging and people. All right, what do we got here? Yeah, the federal law and org must register as a pack. We have uh, big teams on the uh, Some political shit. Uh, people are filing. What is that? File the complaint. Okay. Far more interesting to me is how CNN pushes CIA pro-war talking points regarding Syria. That's what I meant about the bombing or whatever. Libya, Venezuela, Iraq. CNN, which purports to be straight news, but really belongs in the same genre as Raytheon press release. How does it feel to be the face of that? <laughs> yeah, you got to be careful. All these fucking CNN, Fox News, they're all garbage and the danger is the danger is 32 percent of it is real so let's say they report a story of a burglary in new york and a explosion in detroit these things are real and these you know you, you confirm them and you know you hey that's news that's what's going on and then they slip in the propaganda garbage pro-war stuff and they all do it. It took me several months to get any reliable sources. I had to make it like a research fucking project. There's certain reporters that I trust, websites that I are uh, uh, valid. I don't believe anything immediately on, unless they're opinion pieces. Like, you know, someone's going to write an opinion piece on what's going on with the water in Flint. You know, sure, you know, you share it, you know, this is what's going on. But when you want to get to the facts and you got real important things, not that the Flint water is not an important issue, you can't trust them. So, fuck CNN, Fox News, they're just this little garbage. Ugh. They all fall prey to that fucking nonsense. Craft beer. That reminds me of a friend. So what is this? I'm gonna read this Cuomo thing. So I'm interested in I wonder for people who like live upstate, is it do they consider like hey, you know, Cuomo's doing good for us like out there? I don't know. Clickety clack. That's my mouse. I'm about to attack. I doubt it. Yeah, we might go to war with China now. That's just I. I'm gonna just guess it's bullshit. However, I haven't seen articles and stuff. But if it's just this rumor mill stuff, it's bullshit. I'm not saying that there's not a new development I haven't seen, but I'm searching my Facebook and I could actually look on Twitter. But it's always, you know, what? It was Russia, now it's fucking China. It's, it's just such so bullshit. Mm. 
Yes, my podcast partner, the drunken monk, somewhere out there, braving the virus. Yeah, yeah. I'm not too. I'm not informed enough on this Cuomo thing, but I don't trust anything in that sense. But I don't buy his, you know, bullshit. And his, especially him, his fucking dopey brother Fredo. You call me Fredo. Uh, a lot of people up here hate Cuomo. Uh, shout out Drunken Monk. New thing on the news. Oh, so that's like. Uh, you know what? I'll see. Let's see the trend. If it's not trending on Twitter, it doesn't mean shit. So it's not tw- trending yet. Okay, so let's look at our panties in a bunch. <clears throat> it's not even in the top ten trends. Ah, uh, he's been blaming. That's, that's fucking bullshit. Uh, fuck. That's nothing. Get the fuck out of here. And I'm. I, if it's a continuation of that story, it's, just, it's meaningless. Meaningless. It should have stopped there. It should have stopped in China. Well, they're not fucking you know, innocent fucking people. And you still live in that corrupt fucking whatever the fuck it is. They got their own fucking bullshit going on. But yeah, you know, 40 years, it's Russia, Russia, now it's China. No, oh, no, those are the big beds you got to watch out for. Yeah. I don't trust Cuomo. I don't know if I'm going to get the time to go in deep on one of these fucking articles, but it is something that's prominent that's going on, in, for instance, in the city. You know, it's got a lot of nice shots of him cleaning, the, the helping cleaning the trains, but when you watch the video footage, it just feels like such a fucking photo op. It's not funny. But then you see people sharing. They're like, oh, my 2024 pick. You see the record, okay? Let me see the round. Give a fuck about his stupid meetings that he talks nice in. Hmm. Man, I mean, it's, I mean, it's nothing else to really talk about. There's so much. These, these topics are just too big right now. Political, they involve fucking health and this virus that's going around. Like I was talking today with a friend. It just just seemed like nonsense. It was um, what was it we were talking about? Um, all oh, that you got fucking Elon Musk on Joe Rogan. No one's a bigger fan of Joe Rogan than me. Shut up, Justin, okay? No, it's me. And I love Joe. I like Elon Musk. But these aren't experts on the virus. So Elon Musk is saying shit like, if you get hit by a bus, you go to the hospital, they test you for COVID-19, and you die from the bus accident, they're going to list you as COVID-19. And he kept saying it was a fact. This is what's going on. There's no debate. Joe was questioning here and there, but it's bullshit, okay? That's not to say that there isn't a hospital in some bumfuck part of the country that can't fill up their hospital beds. They're going bankrupt. Are they filling out papers in certain ways? And Okay, I get it. I'm not that stupid. Shit could happen. But the way he presents it as is, Oh, you know what? They want to chalk off this and get thirty nine thousand dollars, and oh, and eight thousand dollars for this, and you know, this people, this person got shot by guns. 
he died bleeding out. Let's list him as COVID. That's bullshit. And even the smear and the misinformation, the twisting of the actual uh, words that the CDC used and WHO, all it takes is to look at the actual stuff that's written, and you can clearly see what the mandates were, that they have to follow strict procedures, that it's obvious if someone was shot they, and they die from it, they're going to get listed as the cause of death from the gunshot rooms, but they still want to know if he had COVID-19 in his system because they want to know the infection rate. So it's just more bullshit. Like, and any people on Facebook, the same, I can go through right now. I, I've seen them as I was going through them. The same fucking things with this pandemic shit. It's just all garbage. I'm going to count this stream as a success. I did like three tests privately before this just to check, but I'm not bothered if it's dropping out here and there. And I think the software for Facebook buffers enough that when it's rendered and it becomes part of my feed, that it'll be put together a little better and I might be able to edit it. But I do see it here and there, you know, letting me know it's buffering or, you know, I can see the signal strength getting low. But computer health seems to be good. I'm just getting a, a bad, you know, internet signal. CP usage is really good. I have no drop frames, things like that. They are saying means nothing to me until I see what you're talking about. That's just doesn't make, I don't know what to say about that. They are saying they get paid even, no, they get paid every COVID case, even if it's not COVID. They're saying they get paid every COVID case, even if it's not COVID. Okay, so... Uh, doctors get a guy who comes in, got gunshot wounds to the chest, bleeds out, dies. They test him for COVID. They find he was infected. On the death certificate, the cause of death will be gunshot wounds. Now, could there be places in the country where there's a problem with getting people in the building? Is there a problem with keeping the rent paid or they're going to go bankrupt? Sure, these things can happen. I could see it happening. You know, you know friends or people that would do something like that, right? Hey, Bob, you know, it's real tight this month. List this guy as COVID, you know, these three, and we'll get an extra funding for this month. But stop it. I got friends who work in the hospitals, one of the biggest hospitals in Manhattan. Him and his wife work there. You know him. They have procedures that they follow. Yes, they will diagnose him and check off the box that he was infected, if that's what he was. But the cause of death will be listed by strict procedures. And it has to do with or epistemology and epide I don't know, epistemology is like a philosophy thing, but... They have procedures, and even the wording, when you read these things, break it down to not sure cases. Even if they're not sure if the person died from COVID-19, they still have to follow procedures to get to the bottom of it. And these procedures are the scientific methods for the most part. However, are you saying that people are going to use this to get money? They're going to milk the system. 
Fine, sure. But it's not a fucking major problem. It's like the immigrant problem. Oh, the invaders are coming. What happened to the invaders? What happened to... It's all garbage propaganda that everybody buys into. No, not exactly. Are there places that will do that? Yes, like I could see it happening in, you know, parts of the country where where hospitals are not overseen, where they have private organizations, things like that. Yes, they will try to get milk the system. But there is not a, their mandate is not to do that. It's strict mandate, there's protocols they follow, and I get you. You just, you know, put it out there and ask some questions. That's cool. But in my opinion, it's not a widespread thing that's becoming a problem. As a matter of fact, the data I see on my trusted sites and respected places, that there aren't enough cases being filed, that we are under estimating the deaths because there are people who have never been tested positive who have died and they don't even know so yeah are people gaming the system i I could see it happening you know but not a broad thing that people want to use as a political propaganda machine that is dangerous that's just bullshit nonsense is it a concern is it something you know you get you get you riled up yeah man i mean no, you shouldn't be making money off this bullshit, but people are going to game the system. So that's why there's some truth. That's how conspiracy theories are so, they work so well. You connect enough facts, run a narrative, and you can make everything seem plausible. And if you're good at it, if you get paid to do it, it's so much easier. I read enough about certain things when I was younger if I would have kept up with it on con men, mentalist, human behavior, how magicians fool you, could tell you how they do the trick and still fool you because they know human nature. They know exactly where you're going to look. They know what's going to distract you. These are things that are built into us. And that's how the conspiracies work. And without a critical thinking, without a method of taking a breath and analyzing what you're going to post and what you're going to share... Now, don't get me wrong. There are people in categories who just don't care and want to push buttons. I get it. Fuck the left, fuck the right, whatever. Trigger, try to do this, say this, say that. And I really feel for the people who do care, who are worried. And that just goes to the luck of the draw. Bad brain chemistry, the wrong upbringing. You're conspiracy-minded. You know, luck of the draw, great upbringing, you're a critical thinker. (laughs) There's no easy path. And it's it's sad sometimes because I think I should have been more vocal when I was younger. I did more of the manipulation thing with my friends who would like play Dungeons and Dragons for me, but I would use that as a meditative thing. But... These are the things that um, I laugh at this fucking guy in my chat. I bust his chops every fucking day. I'm just not the type to fucking unfriend and hide stuff. I'll just laugh at a couple of things, and then I'm going to start fucking ripping them. I'm going to start fucking bringing logic into your threads, which you're not going to answer because you have no argument, which most people don't. They'll just attack your character or or do whataboutism. They'll bring up something else. And these are my friends who were posting in my fucking chat right now. Motherfucker. I see the shit you posted. You shared the fucking pandemic fucking thing. But, you know, some people do it smart. They don't put words. They don't attach anything. So they'll just post it and go. And then when you question them, they'll go, oh, you know, I'm just, well, I'm just, you know, I'm just, isn't this interesting? Oh, this is, you know, isn't this interesting? You know, we got to be careful. Right? You got to take it with a grain of salt. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you don't care about the thousands of hits this company's getting, the funding that's going to God hates fags. I'm lumping everything together, but that's how it works, right? 
I bet no one will share this. I bet I won't get one like. You, you've been manipulated from the beginning. And you, it's, it's rampant all over the place. Because you feel patriotic for this wounded soldier. Meanwhile, that guy's making bank. Just, they know how to do it. It's just what it is. And this is the, you know, we're, we're coming out of the toddler age of the internet. This will get more crazy and then it'll be a real powerful weapon for truth. You can't hide the truth for long. Right now, you get a fucking phone in the middle of a riot or a government doing something bad and you got a chance of quelling everything right there. Other countries, they go out, they use their phones, they go, look what's happening in this country. And immediately the world knows. No more waiting for, you know, news articles or your local station to pick it up. This is instant. I can go out right now and expose anything I see. And it's immediate audience. Now, this means you're going to get bullshit. and We're going to have to get the growing pains of fucking nonsense. You know, we're going to get the fucking... People who post stuff and they're not really innocent. They're just troublemakers. That's fine. Everybody wants to get a kick out of shit and triggering the other the other people. But when I drill down deep, I think it's a dangerous thing. Beliefs are dangerous to me. When people say, oh, why can't you leave that alone? They're not harming anybody. Because it's the method of thinking creates a system of the way your brain processes information. So once you have this heuristic set up, these cognitive biases it does that's why it doesn't matter when someone tells you something right because it, it, it gets filtered to a pattern that you've just kept imprinting more and more and more so i for for one feel and i'm really appreciative of people who are just honestly trying to find the truth and they might you know make mistakes and stuff yeah, right. You're broke. Next month, I'm fucked. I, I said at the beginning of my podcast, I think. Um, and I just had a problem with the car. My gear shifter was loose. Like, it wouldn't start. I had to keep pushing it up. And when I was get, about to get out, it moved, you know, like it's not going into place. So I had to bring it in. I got an oil change. My reverse fucking lights had a, went out. So those little things now are just hurting. But yeah, I mean, I think everybody's broke. I'm just lucky that I had a part-time job that did deliveries and that kind of spiked because take out a delivery only to kosher company. We're like an Uber, but for kosher restaurants and I've been getting some money for that, but it's, you know, it's not going to help no more. Yeah, I would say they were still prominent in the early 2000s, though. Newspapers are, what is it, the boomers? The, the You have an age where people cannot do anything but touch the paper, smell it, get the ink on their fingers. I think that'll always stay. I think that'll come back like vinyl records. But you're right. Pa newspapers are done, magazines, all that stuff. But I think you'll always have that core group until... Like another generation or two. I can I, I equate it to like me being uh books, you know. I always have to need a book to read in my hands. The smell, the the feel. The same way like when I write. No, it's the gear shifter. The, you know, it's, um, you know, when you go from park to drive to one and two, I had that, that, that thing had to be tightened. Well, maybe that is training. Okay. Maybe it, whatever. Okay. But it took them, you know, I don't know, 20 minutes, you know, to check my tires, change my oil. The whole thing wasn't long, but it looked like they, went under my steering column, opened that up. I don't think they played with the, you know, other thing. 
Spaghetti Monster Bless. Which God, by the way? You gotta be, you gotta be more, you gotta define that. Thoughts and prayers, thoughts and prayers. <laughs> ah, shit. Yeah, God, I, I, it sure exercised my emojis when your wife posts. I know she takes over your fucking account. I know, I, I know I caught her one time. Yeah, like it had slippage. Not in the, in the tranny when driving, but parking, putting it into reverse and drive. It had like a give. It was kind of wiggling. So, you, you know, they tightened it up underneath. Oh, hello, Anthony. Allah, he meant. <laughs> yeah, why not? He's the young one on the block, right? Man, it's really raining. I can't believe it snowed up there, Rob. I that's surprising. But I don't know if it's getting chillier now. I said it before; it wasn't chilly. It was just cool. But I think it is getting chilly now. Oh boy. All right. It is 11:02 p.m. 5/8/2020. I am Joseph F. Olsis. This is the Deadly Dixon's channel. I am going to my Facebook feed and interacting with my chat. Been going over some stuff. I started out with a little recap of what's been going on. And now I'm um, in hour 2. Of the podcast or stream, whatever the fuck we call on it. Oh, I could see the thing on there now. Oh, that was funny. That's cool. My, I changed the uh, the feed window when I went to look. That's interesting. I'm doing okay, Anthony. I am working part-time, trying to get the money in. It's raining, practicing my isolation. But I got to admit, I was practicing isolation for like 15 years. So <laughs> this is nothing for me. But I've been doing a lot of podcasts. I have uh, a YouTube channel. So I thought every once in a while I get on Facebook and I just go through articles in my Facebook feed. Sometimes I'll go dive deep into an article. We were talking about COVID-19 and politics. Well, I was, and I've been interacting with uh, Rob in the chat. It's still snowing. I mean, it, it, just, it boggles my mind. I got to admit, I'm, I'm surprised. I, I, thought, I, I, admit, I gotta admit, I thought you were fucking with me because I was joking about it being chilly or getting cool. But snowing. Sorry, you got me. You had two. You had the two vehicles still. I, I mean, two vehicles, but you had a motorcycle. But is your? Do you still have the truck? I don't. I don't remember what you had the last time you came down. Oh, by the way, I I, get, I replaced my old shitty minivan with a shitty Explorer, and as soon as I got it, it was like uh, before December. I said, watch, it's not going to 
snow and it didn't fucking snow. So I couldn't even use my four wheel drive. And I'm like, okay, I got more clearance. I could do more deliveries. Cause you know, when it bogs down in snow with my minivan, I wasn't doing deliveries, you know, but now that I can, of course it didn't fucking snow. Oh yeah, please. Uh, I'm prepared. Is this, this is nothing to me, this isolation stuff. It's not even a joke. I mean, I, I, I put a meme out and so many people liked it because they knew it was me, you know? Also, you got a car. Okay. Yeah, I don't remember the last thing you had when you were down here. When you checked out my vehicle, we talked to Burton and stuff. I think that was, a, no, you might've been down one more time. He said, hi, I'm not sure. You get your um, computers out, your laptop out. You got to start helping me out with that site. I'm role-playing Dungeons and & Dragons in a superhero campaign, and I'm using a site that shows a map and has tokens so you can move your pieces around. I wrote enough in the superhero campaign that I've got two new players, or potentially three new players from the internet, Justin, and then Jimmy's been doing d and I've been doing a Witcher campaign, so it's Dungeons and Dragons, but in the Witcher theme. If you're not familiar with The Witcher, it's a show. I'm not sure where the hell it is. HBO, Netflix, uh, the guy who played Superman, Henry Cavill. It's based on a video game and novels. So we got to get you going, Rob. I got to get you in. You know the systems already. It's a great way in this uh, time of isolation to do some role playing, get a little uh, the creative juices flowing, do it online. It's pretty easy. I'll show you everything when you get a chance. Oh, by the way, if you have an iPad or the equivalent for Android, I don't know how that works. I never had one. But I think the site has a app tablet iPad uh, download. So you might not even need to use your desktop. All right, so let me know. I want you, I'm going to put the link in here if I can get this to work. Because first you need to join the site. Then when you join the site, you know, it's easy. It's just like, you know, you know, no money. It's just like an email thing. You join the site. Then when I, when you join, I start the game. I can give you a link that brings you right in. So let me... Uh, I'll put this in the chat. And I got to admit, it's fun. It was a little hard. Um, the D&D was a little more difficult because they don't have a character sheet that is uh, coincides with me and my system. But because it's Jimmy or Justin, it doesn't matter. I can give them a character sheet. But playing online, I'd want to probably go with a newer system like five. Well, there's a second edition character sheet, which I've been using. So it's close. But unless I pay and become a paid member, I can't add custom stuff. Yes, I do have a Discord uh, server. But no, the site itself has camera and mic options but yes uh, I have a discord server we meet in there I set up my schedules there we have a I have a role-playing talk voice channel where I'm sitting in I put assets in and people can come in and learn the system I'm playing but for the site itself it's easier and less um, Less of a drain on the CPU and the computer if you just use the site's mic system and ca I mean, camera. No, I shut. I don't use a camera because that takes a lot of uh, resources. Now, maybe potentially in the future, I could see that. But for now, the site has a really good chat system. So you have a type chat you could type in, and a 
Uh, it'll pick up your mic and your settings. You know, you go in, check your settings. I select no camera and make sure it's my mic, that type of thing. So, Rob, I put the link in. It's called Roll20. It has its, its, its own web browser thing. Now, I think you can do the tablet, but I'm not sure. I don't have a tablet to test with, and Steve was going to bring one over for me to do some tests on, but he hasn't had a chance. You know, he's on his second kid now, and he's the one, and him and his wife who work in the hospital. So I haven't been able to play with it, but I think you could look for this system or maybe even do a search on your app store, depending on what you got. Roll die 20, put it on your tablet, on your computer. And if I'm correct, they work well together. So could you, we could try it. I want to do a test. I haven't done a test with anybody with a camera. So you can, you can be the first one to try, but I think it's complimentary, but I'm not sure. So for instance, let's say you have your computer, your desktop or your laptop. You open the system, you get onto the game. You can use your tablet for like your character sheet or the handouts that I give to people. The handouts will be little tips and introductions into adventures. If you check my YouTube channel, the Deadly Addictions channel, there's a playlist, it's games. I did podcasts and you can see what I'm talking about if you haven't watched them yet. There's several um, role-playing type streams, and you'll see the map. You'll see pictures. I did one for The Witcher, D&D, and I did part one and two for superheroes, where I show the map and stuff like that. I mean, I've been playing recently. We were supposed to play last night, but the other players got um, distracted. Oh, well, you know, they had things to do. Right now, it's all practice, and I haven't set a date and time because I want to get a little bit of a core group. So if I get these two players, they've played about three adventures each. One of them was a training, get to know the system, and... There's a link on my Discord to download the PDF for the Marvel Saga system, which is what I use. So they can actually download the whole rule book and get to know it if they care. But I did enough that I imported the Marvel Saga cards. I had to isolate 97 cards in Photoshop, upload them all individually. But I was able to make a deck that works like a real part of the system. So we got the Marvel Saga system ready to go. Play tested it, me and Justin. Then I took the two new players, and Justin's been in. So we've got like three players and me. Hopefully, we'll get you. Jim Reconnecting, connecting. This will be interesting to see because all my other streams that I did might be a little disruptive here and there. Like you said, a second or two, I cut in and out. But it seems to do a good job of. Buffering and piecing it together, if that makes any sense. And now I'm past two hours, so. This is another test for the draw on the CPU. And the uh, Witcher campaign, which is Dungeons and Dragons, I use the second edition rules is the theme is the witcher but it doesn't mean you have to play a witcher i mean all the classes would be available if you want to play a well any of the traditional characters or even the, you know the unique ones and the superhero role playing is every superhero genre mixed in it doesn't matter if you're a dc fan marvel fan if you're into valiant comics there's no limit like i wouldn't bar anything out but i might make things special so for instance, the Earth is like amalgamated of DC Marvel because of the movies. So all the movies have happened, that type thing. But we we really like The Boys. If you watch that TV show called The Boys, it's fab. It's fucking amazing. I loved it. But we were already playing, and I used it as a alternate universe. So Justin was um 
displaced into another universe and he wound up in the the boys universe so he played adventure with all those characters so there are things i do like that so everything i've amalgamated uh star wars star trek battlestar galactica it doesn't matter i'll i'll put anything in the game and if you look at my stream for the uh, role-playing, you'll see I put vehicles in. So we have Quinjets, and uh, I, I put in at the bottom just to show people um, spaceships. Because, you know, all Marvel superheroes, DC, is always traveling to other planets and uh, other races and star systems. They have such a history in the lore of comics. So I prepared for that also. So we'll have spaceships, those type of adventures, the, the typical comic book stuff. But I'm not, um, you know, I'm not limiting it to anything. I still love the uh, old phase rip back in the day. You had a percentage dice and a colored chart for Marvel. DC had a die 20 system I was never into. So it's always a smoke break. Let's see if this uh, works here. I don't know if you tried, Rob, but that is a link to my Discord server. It mostly started as a meditative mental health place. So it has a lot of resources for uh, mental health, uh, some pointers on psychology, um, you know, resources for like the suicide hotlines and things like that. And there's se sections of it I made now for role playing and stuff like that. It is 11.20 p.m., 5-8-2020. I am Joseph F. Ulsis. This is the Deadly Addictions channel. I am live streaming on a rainy, chilly night, interacting with the chat, going through my feed, generally going over things. I normally go over my feed for these 
podcast and I deep dive into some cool articles, make fun of people with their sharing, so on and so forth. And if I get enough interaction, like I have been with the chat, we can talk and discuss anything. All right. What do we got here? I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> I'll set him up on your Discord. I think it has it already. I'm a little lost on the conversation. I feel like I'm missing something. <laughs> Maybe because of the you know, the way I'm trying to monitor stuff, but I think someone had a computer package for you, Rob, and you're saying he has it already. And I'll set him up on your Discord. Okay. I'm not sure. Oh, no. The party's over. Party's over, people. Justin has arrived at 11.22 p.m. 5-8-2020. Partner in crime, co host of our trailer reaction section of podcast. Bill Maher says liberals are in denial about radical Islam. Okay, I kind of agree with that. Agree with that, <laughs> but I could see uh, he gets a little fucking crazy. So we gotta be careful with this motherfucker. Got some good arguments and some really horrible ones. I think the package is for you, Joe. I'm. I don't know because maybe I mi like I, maybe I'm missing more than uh... this is the inexperienced podcasting. <laughs> Yep, I get lost on the chat a little bit here and there. It's just the function of the system. Always cool to see Carl Sagan stuff on Facebook. Call Sagan, important man in our history. I have no fucking clue, but yay, I guess. <laughs> you can see me in the the feed, go trying to catch up on chat. That's funny. It, it, it updates that. There's an article doing a, uh, talking about that, the way they segmented the America for Republicans, Democrats, and how the Republicans have to cheat or they'll never be voted in office again. That's always fun.
streaming for two hours and 25 minutes, 30 seconds. Things seem to be going well. There's been some hiccups. I've noticed a disconnect and OBS reconnecting every once in a while. But I am doing it under these circumstances for a reason. It's raining. I'm on Wi-Fi. I had issues before trying to stream live the game. But I'm noticing now that I have no dropped frames. Although I am getting shitty internet service, so that's understandable. So there'll be those hiccups and those type of things. But other than that, everything seems to be going good. Define party. I don't know what you mean. If you're talking about Democrats or Republicans, neither. I would probably be an independent right now. I mean, if there was a Green Party leader that I liked, I would, I guess, go there. But in the heat of the run, I would say my choices were Tulsi Gabbard, Bernie Sanders, and Yang. But not because they were Democrats, just because they had the best plan. So I don't have a party. I guess I'll go with the in, in each case by case basis. But I described before, you know, what I think is going on right now earlier. But to sum it up, they're all corrupt. The whole system is corrupt. Democrats, Republicans. Trump is a buffoon, but he's a exposed sore on the political system. So I'm almost rather have him than Biden, who seems to be shady, uh, creepy, and put a good face on things. And I explained before that, although I believe Obama was a good statesman, he was a great speaker, gave people hope. He was as corrupt as them all, gave in on everything. So I don't have a party, if that's what you mean, Anthony. I'm not sure. If it makes sense, I think I explained I grew up Republican or that frame of thinking. I do still have some conservative values. Uh, but as I got older, I went more Democrat. It just seemed the logical and reasonable thing to do. And I don't know, maybe the last 15 years or so, it's just been slowly realizing that the whole thing is bullshit. Oh, so when I, okay, I see, I have to go through and go back down to the bottom. I'm learning, I'm learning. It's still weird though, talking to yourself in a room with a microphone on and everything's quiet. <laughs> it is kind of weird. All right, it says I've been streaming for two hours and 30 minutes. It is 11.30 p.m., 5-8-2020. I'm Joseph F. Ulsus. This is the Deadly Addictions channel. I am interacting with my chat, and I have Anthony, Justin, and Rob. 
for the most part. If this is even streaming, <laughs> I have been dropping in and out. And I have a stream health thing where it's letting me know, you know, video is not too good, but the audio might be good, you know, that type thing. But the more and more I try to bounce back and forth, the more I lose track of chat and the more strain I put on the system. But in, other than the internet, this seems to be pretty good um, stream, at least for this long. I mean, I've been going good. You know, Facebook seems to be a little more friendlier for me testing and, you know, learning the ropes. It lets, it lets me have a preview screen, uh, monitor things before I go live. I'm still a little newbie on YouTube. It's just a little, a little hard to get a grasp on when you're trying to set things up and it goes live. And so I have to do a lot of tests here and there. Well, when you have the system set up, you you know, you do the settings, even when you have little problems, it usually buffers them and smooths them out. Why not just the talking section on Twitch? Twitch is too demanding on systems. It, it runs too much. It takes up too much CPU. Now, if I wasn't a hand-me-down king and everything was old everything i'm running is windows 7 so it should give you an idea i'm not interested in my viewer base yet <laughs> this is me taking baby steps i have uh like 84 86 streams now or videos on my youtube channel i just turn on the mic and i talk about my favorite movies my favorite tv shows a little bit of politics record them and just upload them the live streaming is new to me and I'm not really into the getting a big base yet. I did have a big base on Twitter, for instance, when my book was published. I had like 3,000 followers or something like that at one point. I'm down to like 600. So I have a plan. It's just a very, um, you know, methodical baby steps, testing everything. You know, making the best of what I got. As a matter of fact, I planned on doing game streaming for Twitch. And that's what its strength and popularity is. Not for real, um, you know, growing an audience that I don't have already in gaming. But the way I started was in 2012, I had my book published and I was doing Comic-Con. And once I disappeared for five years off social media and came back, things died down. Now I'm just taking the steps to get back. So Discord was the place I set up to help people go through what I've been through, help them with uh, stress, anxiety, some meditation tips and tools. And Twitter's always been my go-to because you can reach anybody around the world. You can speak to scientists and such a plethora of wide spectrum of people and interest. Facebook is more the friendly family, you know, pictures of your aunt, your cousins, and your little nieces and things like that. But it's me just covering my bases, doing a little bit on each right now. Snowing in May, you know, I don't know. 
monitor things before I go live. I'm still a little look into that. I'd be curious to see if it uh, has ever snowed up there. See, I don't remember where you are, like in what section or whatever. I kept thinking, like for me, for some reason, you're still in Maine. Like I just, uh, I just see Maine in my head when I think of where's Rob. But okay, I don't know. You could be right beyond Westchester or something. I'm not sure. Snowing in May, you know. I don't know. Monitor things before I go live. I'm still a little look into that. I'd be curious to see if it uh, has ever snowed up there. See, I don't remember where you are, like in what section or whatever. I kept thinking, like for me, for some reason you're still in Maine. Like I just, uh, I just see. Where's Rob? I gotta remember to keep things muted. You have so many, you're watching, you're monitoring stuff, and if your feed's on, it goes through my mixer and gives me an echo. So I got to be careful when I check things. I fucking mute this fucking thing and pause it or something. Yeah, I know. I just, hopefully I just stopped it. <laughs> I hope I stopped it. <laughs> No, um, book two is like halfway done. I had the time had comic books tying in an animated show. I wrote a script for that would tie in, fill in different time periods, but, uh oh, he said it stopped. Oh, okay. Fixed. Okay. Yeah. I, when I open up certain things and it starts playing, I forget that it's going through my mixer. But yeah, I think I fixed it. Thanks. <laughs> the fun of streaming. But yeah, um, second book is like chapter 12. And like I said, the uh, other stuff that's connected to it were fleshed out. I wrote the first pilot for the cartoon, the outline for 12 episodes, like a season, a trading card game. Yeah, of course. Yeah, once I, and you could do it at any time. I could have done it for this. Someone could do it now. I mean, it's late now. I mean, I've been doing this for two hours and 40 minutes, but... You, what you can do is, let's say I schedule the live event and you see it come up at uh, 9 p.m., whatever. You can start a watch party, yes. Uh, I think I can even start one, too, for that matter. And like I said, it's baby steps. It's getting confident. Uh, relying on the Wi-Fi is not very confident build, confidence building. So now I'm doing it under certain circumstances, raining, bad Wi-Fi connection. Once this renders and I check it out in my editor, I'll see how it is. But as we go along, sure, I mean, botch parties, hookers, coke, whatever the fuck. I don't give a shit. I think I'm going to be doing another three hour stream. This will be the second one, I think. I did a, did I do a three hour Facebook or a YouTube? Hmm, I'm not sure. I think it was a Facebook. It's 11.40 PM, 5-8-2020. Blah, 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 the Deadly Addictions channel. The famous author, Joseph F. Olsis. Yay.
You say them days are over. Fuck out of here. They haven't started yet. Ah oh, man, I don't want to refresh my monitoring producer studio crap, but it's not showing the stream, so I'm just gonna accept that there's an image <laughs> coming across. Ah, fuck it, right? Why not? It's two hours and forty minutes in. Might as well live a little. I'm gonna have to scroll down on the comments though. So there's also a good test, uh, as I do things in the producer studio on Facebook, you can see how it's impacting the stream. I'm wondering if I'm missing, see my OBS is cool though, because it's not, um, showing drop frames. That's what the problem I was having before when I tried to stream the game other people's audio, well, everything linked through, it just didn't work. Started getting drop frames. Yes, I am an atheist, a rather strong one. Uh, in some cases, I am an anti-theist, <laughs> meaning that I believe that there's a threshold where religions do more harm than good, no matter how much you argue or show the benefits, I can show the detriments and the, the overwhelmingly bad impact. Although I might agree that in some cases in our history it was necessary, it piggybacked on an evolutionary trait, it grouped us society, you know, I can get with it, but organized religion is on its way out. All right, so I still got the video showing, and the chat box is working. That's pretty cool. I jerry-rigged that, by the way. I couldn't get the integration widgets in because these. I told you in the beginning, I have to have create a certain page. I have to make a page now for the Deadly Dixon's channel on Facebook, and then I'll be able to integrate it. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to learn how to share that. But then there's another page. I got like four fucking pages already. I got the author page, the book page. I don't know what the fuck JF Ulsus is for. I don't know what that was for. I got my mental health page. That's four. But it won't let me choose the primary one. So I'll start a Deadly Addiction. Oh, I got the Deadly Addiction Creations. Maybe I'll just change the name of that. I was doing artwork and creating overlays for games and... Um, thumbnails for people's channels on YouTube with a little extra income that was coming in. It's slowed down now, but I started the Deadly Edition Creations. I was going to start showing some of the work I was doing. Now, I don't draw. I'm not a good artist, but with the help of Justin throughout the years, I got good at Photoshop and I'm good at having a good eye for how things will fit together and look nice on a thumbnail or a banner. And I play with animation to make some animated banners and stuff like that. Back in the day, I was king. I was a uh, Starlock. Whoa. Was on the forums. I made skins for games, uh, hex to 3D decoding, and I knew the web coding and all that stuff. And now it's like a time to learn a new skill, right? I just go back and... Well, I've been doing certain things. I have a wheel of interest, and I have, like, five things on this wheel, pretend wheel, you know. It's this way I don't get obsessed, and I can go from topic to topic. Yeah, all the art that's on my channel that I use is... From every, from all my friends, well, except for the font, uh, it's like Kung Fu Shanghai, I think it's called. 
but yeah, all the pictures and all the stuff in there. I thanked everybody in my book and the acknowledgements and the thank you section. And then they make, they're making it easier now. And especially with a crisis like this and everybody's home. Get to connect. You know, now if, if we help, if you all had money, you know, you have uh, tablets, right? That you draw on and you upload it. No, I have not watched the Motley Crue movie. I have a weird relationship with that band in a sense where I remember when they first came out, bought their stuff, loved their albums, then they kind of went a little weird with me. But seeing them live and how bad they sounded just turned me off in the general sense to Motley Crue. Uh, that's the problem when you have such highly mixed records that sound amazing, but you insist on going touring with only your one guitarist. So what happens is, and I'm, I play guitar, by the way. My, I'm not a musician, but in my youth, I was really interested in it. So what happens is the bands go live, and as soon as the rhythm guitarist goes into the lead, everything drops out. Now, if they recorded live that way, so like the Beatles or you know, some of the great bands that would only use four people, they record the album, so when they go live, there's no real big difference in the sound. But Motley Crue just... It was horrible. I've seen them uh, maybe three times and it just lost its, you know, its uh, essence. And then they started mixing their songs and playing them differently. And I, that, that turns me off. But yeah, Kiss. Kiss is the best live band. Uh, they're on their end of the road tour now. Can't go wrong with a Kiss concert, hands down. I just did a podcast on Kiss. My love of them and what would impact they had on me as a kid. I was born in 1971, so I'm a KISS fan. Make up the whole nine yards. And there's just exceptional bands too, like Korn, Live, Metallica, Live. You know, you know I can go into the older ones, but Queensryche, Jesus Christ, Queensryche. Don't get me started on them. I'm going to do a podcast on that. I'm going to tie that into music therapy because that's the band I use for um, my music therapy tips and tools or whatever the fuck we call it. My foundations for wellness. Still, no matter how many hiccups we've had, I've not dropped. Oh, well, hold on. Okay, so I did drop some frames, and it seems like I dropped frames because of the total disconnect. So the bed, the strong and weak signals seem to be fine, but when I lose connection and have to reconnect, it loses frames. Okay, so that's a little mental note. Yeah, ACDC Live is amazing. And they're one of the rare bands that had such a great singer, it replaced him, and the singer was just as good. That's, well, different, but it's so rare. I was thinking of an ACDC song to put into the game. Because in my head, I envision certain songs for certain characters. And for Zamara, I put in Barracuda. For Kensei, is Trip Like I Do. I was thinking for Justin, it was... Because um, I keep seeing I keep seeing the good guys when he buys the Trans Am. And you hear... Uh, what is it? Thunder. Na, 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 na. Thunderstruck. So that might be Justin's song I'll put into the fucking game. I don't know what I'll put in for Rob. Probably, um... 
I don't know what comes to mind when Rob. Uh, hmm. My instinct went to Pantera, but hmm, Corn might be better. Yeah, like a old Corn song. Uh, thoughts on ICP? Um, not for me. I can see the appeal. Now you're talking about the insane clown posse, right? With the, um, what a loyal fan base, if that's what you're talking about. But no, I don't, I don't enjoy them. In that sense, but I could see why they're, uh, you know, gaining an audience and stick with it. The Juggalos, whatever the fuck they're called. And I heard that they do great performances and stuff, so. It's just not for me, you know. Also, you think corn would have fit you better? All right, but. What would it be, though? All right, so if we narrow it down to corn. Eh, throw me away. Nah, it doesn't, it doesn't, that doesn't fit me. I'm thinking dead bodies everywhere. <laughs> dead bodies everywhere. Dead bodies everywhere. That, that, that just comes to mind. Obviously, it's just what my impression is. And any song and MP3 want, we'll just put in there. But, I just think of when I set up the characters and get their character sheets ready. I'll do one for you, Rob. But, um... I don't know what that means, Howard Stern Day. Every day is Howard Stern Day, right? Unless like a, that's like a correction and it's a... You tried to type a corn song, but it <laughs> corrected it for you. <laughs> but I'm not sure how the song starts in a because like a lot of the songs I'm picking are good intros that start well, so it gets you into the scene quicker. I don't know if dead bodies everywhere starts quick enough. You know, does it blind? Yeah, blind works, but I'd have to go back and I have to rethink it because my initial reaction is it has to be from the start. Catchy. So Barracuda from Heart. Super catchy from the beginning and it kind of fades in. Uh, immigrant song. From Thor Ragnarok. Great build up into the song. Thunderstruck. Same thing. I'd have to want to find a song that builds in and brings the essence of the character to the front. Because I think even Twist starts like it's like a, what is it, an eight second song or something like that? He's just like using his mouth as a instrument, but it goes right into another song. Also from the older albums. That'd be interesting. I'll choose one. And then, like I said, it's just me choosing, but eventually I don't care what songs people want to put into the jukebox, but only the game master could play the jukebox. So it's not like all the players can start playing songs and choosing them. And I don't know if me and Justin did a test yet, but I can make players a GM, but I'm not sure if that lets them play the jukebox. Not sure, because I think the jukebox on the Roll20 site is linked to your upload. So I think it's the person who's uploading. Now, maybe it would let 
someone as a GM upload and then play their own playlist, but I'm not sure. I think you have to create the game. So you can give me recommendations and I'll put the put them in as an MP3. And we can see how it works, you know, in the game. I have uh, the Matrix song. Oh, I got the X-Men 95 theme, the cartoon theme I put in the game. Uh, the Blade song, of course. The rave scene with all the blood. Um, what else did I put in there? Thor Ragnarok. I'd have to check, but... I'm building up enough. And I have, like I said, adventures already planned and written. I like to get things in abundance. And then if you have a stressful week, if you have a bad day, you're not under the gun. So even my podcast, I have a certain amount in the bank, meaning they're edited, ready to go and upload. And now with the Roll Die 20 site with the adventures, I have about five or six for the new players. And that kind of means the old players too, but you know what I mean? Focus on them and then two to three for experienced players. And some of those in, in between could be solos and people just around, you know, the whole group's not here today. So we'll get well, who's around to play today. I also have an idea to incorporate live chat into playing or, you know, let's say you don't join the site, but you're in the live chat right now. And we're playing and we're all on voice and we're all on the site and you're controlling your character pieces. But there's like eight people in the live chat, right? And they're typing in, oh, yeah, what's going on? And they're listening. You could easily, well, maybe not so easily, but you could easily, in a way, designate one of them as a classic character, right? So you can go, hey, uh, Anthony, what's your favorite character? Oh, Spider-Man, and then he gets to play Spider-Man for the adventure. And that could be done right from the live chat. Now, that puts more work on me, but an experienced GM or DM should handle it, meaning I'm just going to ask you a question, you respond, and I'll make the check for you, so on and so forth. I'm just talking about people who aren't going to go on the site and participate, but if people in the live chat are like sitting there listening and they want to get involved... Well, guess what? The heroes meet up with so-and-so. And then you could bring Thor in and Iron Man. There could be people in the chat. Which is why one of these tests I just did today was, can I get, can I jury rig the Facebook chat to go into the window? And yeah, basically I had to crop a page and stick it there. As, a, as an asset, so to speak. Whereas the other streaming services I'm playing with have built in, I call them widgets and chat boxes and alert boxes and sh little banners on the bottom. It's a more dolled up pretty system. But like I said, I'd have to make a Deadly Addictions channel page, which I'll do, or I'll just change my creations page. And I'll start doing some tests on that. Yes, I have, how many do I have on there? I, I, I got maybe 11. What happened was I was using a podcast source or uh, hub that you had to pay for storage and I wasn't paying for it, especially nowadays. So they had, I had a limit on what I could upload every week or every month. Now I'm at Anchor and Anchor has no limits. So I just started putting more up. I'm going to be putting at least, you know, two to three audio podcasts on, you know, per week. So that should be growing rapidly. But I hope you are seeing the right feed because I checked my iTunes, uh, Apple podcast, and one of my feeds was the older one and it only had like four or five podcasts on there. So Anthony, if you could verify for me, if you're even looking, how many do you see on Apple podcasts? If you looked, it, it, was it more than five or six? Because it takes time for the feed to update, but I should have a, I should have a good number in that sense. Not as many as my YouTube, 
but did you see four or five or you, you just, or you didn't look and you're just give that's just general advice to put more podcasts. Cause I'm not sure what you meant by that. You definitely need to put more podcasts on Apple podcasts. So is it because you looked and you saw a, a small number like four or five? Was it more than seven or eight in that range? Or this is general advice you're giving. So that'd be cool. But yeah, that's my plan. I'm on Spotify, uh, Google Play. I noticed... uh, Okay, so there should be, okay, I just updated that less than a week ago, but when you search, make sure there's not two Deadly Addictions channel feeds, one would be bigger than the other. However, I only recently updated the Apple feed, but there should be more than three. So I'll look into it, but thanks for the checking for me. Yes. Uh, my feed right now for my, um, you know what? Let me check. Why not? Let me check. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to post my anchor link. Now, when you go to my anchor link, it has all the podcasts there, but it also says can be listened to on seven sites. Like one of them's Apple, one of them's Spotify. I'm going to try to check real quick. Maybe it just needs to be updated, you know, in time, like the feed. Because they take RSS feeds from your main thing, and I switched from SoundCloud to Anchor within a week ago. Oh, so you did find that. So I got to figure out how to delete the other one. And this one has about eight. Oh, they broke them up. Okay. I think what it does is like, so maybe 2019 is considered season one. Uh, I'm going to look into that because I did notice that. But like I said, it has only been five to seven days of me switching from SoundCloud to Anchor. All right, I'm looking. What is this? Uh... Yeah, I'm looking around at my um my anchor page. I want to make sure I know what number I have, so. But yeah, Apple I, I put Apple Podcast, Spotify. They were in my recent phase of, because I gotta take my videos and rip the audio from them, which is not hard. But is when you have an upload limit, I was frustrated and not keeping up with it, so I got so far behind. But I just recently started putting them on there. Eleven. Okay, so yeah, that that's that sounds right. And like I said, so tomorrow and Sunday, I had another two or three. So three a week, most likely. But that'll grow. That'll definitely grow. 
But I don't like that there was an option for someone to find only three. So I got to try to figure out how to scrub that one in some sense. Or is it saying that season one is three? You know what I mean? So, but this is good. Thanks for the feedback. Um, So I put the link in for Anchor, and then what Anchor does is you'll see underneath it'll say where to listen. And there you got your link for Apple, Breaker, Google Podcasts, you know, Spotify, and etc. And like I said, this was just recent, so I'm going to try to figure out how to get rid of that. All right, so I'll get rid of, I'll try to remember to get rid of one, okay. Okay, so one with my name is Joseph F. Olsis and probably one to Daily Addictions channel. Addiction Master. Ah, okay. I get you. All right, so that makes sense now. Yeah, I don't want confusion. I want people to see the main feed that's going to keep going now. I appreciate it. That's cool. So I'm going to do more post with this i'll just give a lot of links out for anchor to get that going and hopefully that anchor link to apple will be the one to the big one because this is where i have most of my podcasts on now that's real helpful by the way thank you anthony that helps baby steps Like Spotify became big, and I wasn't even uh, really thinking about it until I saw it a couple of times, and someone mentioned to me, like you said, you need more on Apple Podcasts. Someone said you're not on Spotify. I was like, oh, that's big, and apparently it is. It's you know, it's got some uh, traction. You know, some things just die out. You know. Here's a post on Facebook from a family member. Why your Christian friends and family members are so easily fooled by conspiracy theories. I like that. That's logical. <laughs> Yeah, I think Spotify is gaining traction with the new generations with ease of app integration, things like that. But I didn't look enough. I just took advice from people and, you know, went back in. Like I said, it's just funny you mentioned it because it was just less than a week ago. I went to Anchor and built up that feed. The existence of white holes may settle one of physics' biggest debates. Well, you got to prove that first, right? It's a theory. And in science, a theory really means something. Not the colloquial theory that people throw around. There is a difference, people. Christopher Hitchens. He's a hero. That man knew how to get to the heart of the debate. 
I think one of the four horsemen of atheism, I think. Who is it? Uh, Christopher Hitchens, Richard Dawkins, Sam Harris, Dan Dennett, maybe? I'm not sure. Yeah, it's fucking cold. It's chilly now. I want to put a sweater on. <laughs> uh, the wind's blowing right through the fucking windows and the air conditioning. Alright, we're doing a break. I gotta mute. It's 12 11 a.m. 5 9 2020. I'm Joseph F. Elsus. This is the Deadly Addictions channel. I am taking a break. I'm sorry you'll have to have dead air because I used music the last time and I got copyright right struck. So please stand by and enjoy the silence. Breathe three to five seconds in through your nose. Slight pause. Let it out through your mouth. Five to eight seconds. This is your focus. This is your balance. Breathe. I am back. The wind is going crazy here. It's whistling like I'm crazy in my backyard. I'm curious if it's coming over the mic. The next sounds will be a bowl, though. I am smoking a little above average weed. In these times, I need a little more old weed than the goods, you know what I mean? Mixing in a little tobacco. And the pipe is a gift of a friend. It's more like a Lord of the Rings, Gandalf, Frodo type pipe. I smoked my vaporizer earlier. And I haven't pulled out my water bottle in a while. That could change, though. My vaporizer has a little water bubbler attachment. Yay. Three hours and 15 minutes. Well, I should make a note that in the three hour and 12 minute mark, I had to go to the bathroom. It's the longest podcast I've done so far. Might as well keep it going. See how long I can keep this shit up for. How long can I ramble on? Yeah, well, the uh, hobbits had them too, so. It's not like just the old wizards, you know?
see how long can I push this for? How long can I keep talking by myself? <laughs> Oh, let's go double back on my feed. And my Christian friend. Yeah, we know. Well, I know why they're easily fooled, but coffee's almost done. It sounds like it's blizzard here. It's amazing. Would I be surprised if it's snowing here, Rob? Man, it is windy. Fuck, I forgot. Oh, Jesus Christ. Give me one second. Hold on. Just please stand by. I am back again. So, three hour, 15, 18 minute mark, and I started getting fucking cold. I had the windows open and everything. Whiz, the winds just started fucking blowing my curtains open. Whew. Holy shit, did I just get cold, man. <laughs> uh, gotta, gotta keep these things in mind. I'm wearing pajamas and an undershirt, and fucking cold now and i noticed it before i bet if i go back to this podcast this stream i started saying oh it's cold but i wouldn't say it's chilly yeah. little little did i know yeah sure oh yeah we'll do that thing with your um your phone, you gotta find one of those phone apps and that has you like in a weather station. I remember you did the space one, that was funny. I actually wrote a, I put on a sticky a idea that I would call you and you would give reports from the space station, like on a space wall, because you had that app on your phone that it looked like you were in a space suit in space. <laughs> so we could use some of those apps and do some funny stuff, you know. Yeah, I don't know. It's the wind is howling here. It's ripping through my backyard. I had a attempt to close the window because I don't want to ruin this podcast. Things are going so well. But I should get up and close the window. Yeah, it yeah, you did have it is that jarring when you got the real nice hot weather. It's getting nice out and then boom. I'm waiting for the heat to come up. That'll happen soon, I bet, right? Maybe there's like a temperature thing. Fuck, cold. Oh, I thought the hunger would get me first, and I prepared, and I, I test these things, and I... Uh, that was Skype. What was Skype? Oh, that was Skype. Oh! Okay, the filter. I think I thought there were filters from a phone. You sure? I don't even know if I have Skype on this computer. Hmm. Oh, that's weird. I thought it was a part of the phone app thing.
Yeah, so behind the scenes here, um, clicking and opening things, I'm trying to see what destabilizes the stream. If I tried to open Photoshop right now, or my editor, I bet I would see the... Oh, okay, so confirmed that Skype put a different filter. That's cool. I didn't know that. It was funny. I, that podcast is on my channel. It's just not public. I think we streamed for like an hour and 15 minutes. Bullshit. And we tried to get Justin in. It was some horrible feedback. And that was like eight, nine months ago. Something like that. Yes. There is a private. Maybe I can make it like available. I'm going to edit it, right? I can go and make it like a special patron thing. So the patrons who follow me. I try to give them special stuff every once in a while, but not that I have patrons. It's my boss and fucking Steve. Uh, but yeah, what you do is you put special content out for them. Like I have a blooper, a uh, couple of blooper podcasts of me and Justin where uh, we mentioned someone's name that didn't want to be mentioned and it turns into a funny uh, podcast, but things like that. Maybe make them private and put them up for people. We are here, twelve twenty-three a.m., five nine twenty twenty, streaming for three hours and twenty-three minutes in Brooklyn, New York. One one two two three. Wind is howling. Sounds like the rain has stopped. Or my theory is correct. It's snowing, but. I don't want to get up and look, although I should close the window. You're listening to Joseph F. Elsus, the Deadly Addictions channel. I started going over feed, went through my timeline, started getting engagement from the chat, had a lot of different discussions. Now I am just blabbering, seeing how long I can go. There's not much that I had to do tonight. Like I said, once I get enough stuff, what I call in the bank, I got enough videos edited. I got enough stories written for the campaigns. I plan out some of these recordings and live streams I want to do, but I don't make them stress me out too much. Like I use Facebook as my content. And I guess I could do the same thing with Twitter. I think Twitter is a Periscope type thing. I have to look into that too. I don't know how popular that is these days, but it's the way you stream like I would on Facebook, but you stream to Twitter. Maybe you got it wrong, but I'll check it out. Yeah, I haven't checked the weather, the temperature, but yeah, nothing beats that fucking storm. I mean, branches were covered in ice, car doors were sealed with ice, the beer froze and blew up right next to the campfire. Liquid, uh, dishwashing liquid was frozen. It's so cold you don't sleep, right? It's just fucking I think we were the last ones who fucking gave up finally we're like everybody's in their fucking car let's just fucking not freeze to death <laughs> I think I saw something on that about um, a certain section that was getting caught in I don't know what they call these things nor'easters and whatever the fucks but yeah i did hear a little bit about a cold spill i just didn't think it was an effect here and it happened really quick because like i said there's a time frame here where i'm talking and i'm going hey it's a little chilly i hear the wind picking up and then i had to put a fucking sweater on maybe i should play with that chat box a little bit right I see it looks like it's getting cut off a little bit to the right. 
Let's see if I can fuck with that. Hmm. Ah, uh, let's see if I can do this on the fly. Do I got the skills necessary? What? 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 See how long it takes to take effect to the live stream. So I noticed when I actually bothered to look that the chat box I put up in the stream is cut off to the right. So I made adjustments in my OBS and the changes should take effect. So you should see the end of people's sentences and even a thumbs up maybe. There you go. There we go. All right, I'm learning. Like I explained before, this is a jury rig chat box if you get these other add-ons and stuff they are more friendly they have their own little chat boxes designed i'm using the old obs not even the streamlabs obs so i just adjusted the chat box now people could see the full sentences and Learning all the time. I don't know. You think I can hit the four hour? I think I can hit the four hour mark. Although I did have to go to the bathroom. And I am almost finished with the coffee. I do have a backup of soda. I got plenty of weed left. I mean, in my tray. I make a big, uh, big amount before I do these things. If I'm recording my 10 to 20 minute stuff, it's nothing, you know, just pause the recording and just go back. But when I'm live here, I got to get everything going. Is that supposed to be a reference to something? I'm not sure I get it. Close your stinking chat box. I don't know how many beers you want, <laughs> Justin. No more coffee or confefe, as my humble, ever so gracious president says, or types it rather. Confefe, confefe. <laughs> uh, it's getting silly time. Silly time. Can I do a half hour sitting alone, blabbing? Just rambling on. It is 12.31 a.m. 5-9-2020. You're listening to Joseph F. Elsus, the Delhi Dixon's channel. Is chilly, windy as hell in Brooklyn, New York. One, one, two, two, three. Fuck, I got cold. I'm not hungry. I'm not really thirsty. I got enough weed. I just should have really closed that window. <laughs> oh, shit. Meditate, just focus. Usa.
takes a while to practice enough to meditate and ignore certain things. If you get good enough, you can maintain a flow state and certain states of mind, but I haven't been able to do that in recent years. But yeah, you could uh, ignore a certain amount of uncomfortable heat, cold, those type of things. Well, I don't know how the fuck anybody's here for three hours. Uh, you've been here most of I think, the whole fucking stream, so. Smoke up. Everything else is just icing on the cake. I'll see how this comes together in the render, and I gotta fucking upload it, rip the audio. I can do that tomorrow. And another cool thing about this is uh, I do a Facebook stream and it stays on my Facebook, you know, page and so on and so forth. People can check it out. And then I download it and I can upload it to YouTube as content. So it's like another video in the bank. I think I will. I'm going to look into Periscope too. If that's even the correct thing to say these days, I'm not sure what people use to stream to Twitch. I mean, um, not Twitch, damn it, Twitter. I think it's Periscope, but I could be wrong. When I get gaming going, that would be the place for Twitch. Three hours and 33 minutes. I can do 27 minutes. We can do this. I'm in bed by, I'm in bed by 10. I'm in bed by 10. Fuck is that mean? It's code, right? He, he's in trouble, right? I, I, we gotta help him. I don't know what the fuck that means. Unless that's like code for an emoji. I'm in bed by 10. I'm not up on the lingo, but good night. Good night, sir. I said good night. I don't know what the fuck that's from. But it's in my head. I saw a really cool post I can't find again. It was uh, an orchestra instrumental of Inspector Gadget. Like the woman plays all the parts. It's like nine windows open up with her playing different parts it was pretty cool i can't find it again well, i'll probably get fucking copyright struck for that so fuck that plan for the worst hope for the best Ooh, it is howling out there it's snowing in new jersey so, I don't know if Rob's still here. That could mean it is. it could snow here. That's insanity. I just got a post on my Facebook feed. It's snowing in New Jersey. It's May. Holy shit. I knew it got fucking really cold, man. I'm not saying I'm in Jersey. I'm in Brooklyn, New York. But it's close enough. Did you hear me, Rob? It's snowing in New Jersey. Okay. That's fucking amaze balls. This is fucking crazy. But hey, it's twelve thirty six a.m. five nine twenty twenty. Deadly Dixon's channel. Your host Joseph F. Ulses, being entertained by the live chat. Robert, Justin, Anthony. Thank you for joining me and giving me something to work off of. 
besides me trying to do a fucking radio show on my own. Good training, though, and good practice. I got to admit, doing three drops of honey a day, I think kind of helped. It could be a placebo effect, but I had problems in the beginning trying to stream for long times. I guess you build up stamina. So I have, when I'm using OBS, I have filters, noise suppression, sound gate, that type, noise gate, that type thing. So you don't hear the fans running, little things like that. I think the wind is getting filtered out, but if it comes over the mic, that'd be pretty amazing. I tell you the heat in the winter came on. I had to redo a podcast because of the time frame. I couldn't do it when the heat came on. The pipes would clang and you'd hear the steam going through. It actually came over the mic. That is the wind of change. Let it blow through you. Let it cradle you in its arms. That's fucking nuts. Just think you could hit a wind. That's that's crazy. There's a fucking fan right here. The computer's on. The wind is just. Well, I, I, I gotta close the window. Yeah, that, that might help. <sighs> 22, 21, 22 minutes to go. To hit the four hour mark. A milestone. <clears throat> Breakthrough. A time to remember in history as I did my first four hour podcast by myself. That would put me in the range of worst case scenario. So let's say I had a radio show, uh, whatever, t- traditional, serious FM type show. You'd have to carry a show for four hours. That's the standard, I guess, general. So I've always wondered. Besides the stamina, the voice, uh, the topics, can you, I keep talking for four hours? But they do commercials, and I've taken one pee break and a quick get a sweater break. So I guess it'd be easier if I had time breaks like. Eventually, I'll get Burton to whitelist my channel, so I'll be able to play his music, which is what I wanted to do, and I did, and I got fucking copyright struck. But I'll have it set up, so this will be even easier. Yeah, recording and streaming. Uh, people could listen to the sultry voice of the Deadly Addictions channel. Sleep well. Should I go over the coronavirus numbers? <laughs> That was the first one I did. I was just, I would keep recapping it. You'd be surprised how fucking quick that thing jumps. You know, 300, 300 deaths in like, you know, several hours or whatever the fuck it is. I would have thought I had to close the fucking window. I should have. I mean, the rain was hitting the air conditioner before. (laughs) 
This is going to be a real fucking... Big file to upload. <laughs> Don't forget, Rob, when you get a chance, you got the desktop open. I'm not saying now, nah, I know you're going to bed, but the link to, for that site, you got to join the site. And then once you join, you let me know. Jump into the game. I'll give you a link. You don't have to play right away. I just want to set that up. So keep that in mind when you know you had said you had things packed up. But and let me know if the tablet thing works. If you can find the app or whatever that is on that device and such. Yeah, maybe you can even, well, deciding on what device you're going to test it on. We can do a camera test with you, whatever. We'll keep that in mind, too. Am I supposed to know who Anthony is, by the way? I mean, I, I we friended each other. Is that someone I know? I can't tell by the image. It's too small on the, you know, the window chat thing I have out, had open monitoring the stream. But I'm guessing he's someone you know up there, right? I don't know. It could be fucking son. I don't know. I don't fucking know. Soda's going rapidly, though. So I could see nearing the four-hour mark. I probably have to pace myself more with alternating the drinks. Maybe a lozenge of some sort. The fucking Anthony I've been talking to this whole time in the chat is this your son that was here? I wish I would have fucking known that. I didn't know. I'm sorry. I wouldn't have been so polite and nice to him. Fuck out of here. I couldn't tell. The little avatar from this distance looked like a middle-aged man. Like, I couldn't... I don't even know if it was a person. Like yours, I can't really tell what it is, but I could tell now because I remember it's like an emblem. I even accepted the friendship thing. I didn't even notice it. Was it that noticeable? Like the avatar and stuff? I didn't notice. It's weird. So that's why Justin said he meant to me, uh, okay, I'm getting it now. I get it. I thought you was like someone who just lived up there and was talking to you. Well, I got a... Yeah, they're small, and from this distance on a different TV, I have two monitors kind of set up. I just didn't realize it.
CPU usage is really good. Not that many drop frames. It's just a signal that's been a problem and that shouldn't be too major and I'll check that when it's rendered but Yeah, I'm getting it now. I'm piecing it together. <laughs> I get it now. Yeah, just let me know when you're coming in, whatever. Oh, he's small. He's in a picture that's big. I get it. The picture is big, but he's small in it, and it's made smaller. I get it now. Now I recognize him. Well, I'm mostly comparing this to the other time I streamed, and I tried to stream the game. It was just too much information on a Wi-Fi. I was dropping signals and it would cancel my stream. This seems to be losing signal, but making up for it and reconnecting and, like I said, trying to smooth it out, but we'll see. 3 hours and 48 minutes. I'm getting close. I'm about to stream all night. Non-stop streaming. I mean, I can fucking do it, right? I mean... Staying up for two or three days in a row is maybe a little harder now that I'm older, but if I had like a game to play or something, I'd definitely be able to stream and stay up. Because it's not like I'm getting tired, I'm just going to need food, clothing, shut the fucking window, those type of things. All right, all right, we have Penn and Teller on my feed. Not bad, they're really cool. I like them. America's meat obsession won't change soon, but some experts forecast the start of a titanic shift. Plant-based meats bloom as coronavirus spoils meat industry. Wow, there's the culprit right there. Plant-based meat companies. But I could see that, you know, meat industry is going to be affected soon. We're not going to see the ramifications of it for another week or two. And you'll start seeing, I mean, maybe some people have, but you'll see this price of beef going up if this doesn't get rectified real soon. So I could see plant-based meats booming. Makes sense. Albert Einstein did not become brilliant in a vacuum. Here are five of his favorite books. That's interesting. I'll go back to that one eventually. Yeah, I got a couple of cool things to read, but did nothing, you know, stand out as something to go in depth with. Because some of my podcasts, I'll just go into an article and read it word for word. Just gives me practice on just fucking speaking and constantly rambling. Because if it was a radio show, there'd be fucking, you know, no excuse to be not talking and keeping people entertained, that type of thing. We'll all be vegans. Yeah, I mean, come on. If you get down to it, it'll eventually be, you know, we don't want to hurt animals. And then all of a sudden, you know, you don't want to hurt plants, right? They have feelings now. So why not? Let's not even be, let's just be like Aryans and... There's this new um, technology they developed. I don't know if it's going to be mainstream anytime soon, but they can literally make food out of air. So it could solve a lot of hunger problems, things like that, but it won't be mainstream for a while. So there you go. We'll just draw food out of the molecules in the air. Don't bother the plants, don't bother the animals.
Well, going over the feed again, there's not much new. No, nothing I would delve into. I have about eight minutes to go to hit the four hour mark and I'm not really tired or anything. Just relying on the feed gets into a bogged down way of looking and trying to talk. So it must be rather I just pick a topic and go nuts. Like they made tobacco packs under a certain amount of weight limit illegal. They got caught up in that vaporizer thing. So now you can't find little packs of Topps tobacco and drum and bugler and all that stuff. It's going to be illegal as of the 21st, I believe. So yay. I mean, I guess, you know, you don't want children being able to afford or kids, teenagers, whatever, tobacco. They'll be less likely to buy them. But it's interesting because I went to the store and I went to go get one and the guy's like, what? And he was all confused and he was like nervous and said they're illegal. I don't know who sold it to you. I'm like, okay. I looked at it and it's not illegal until like the 21st, but they're able to sell their stock. He was just probably new and didn't want to get in trouble. But usually one of those packs lasts me over a week, more than a week. It's just something to uh, make the weed last longer. It is 12.54 a.m., 5-9-2020, Deadly Addictions Channel. I am Joseph F. Ulsis. We are winding down the podcast, the stream. Been streaming for 3 hours and 54 minutes, and I'm going to go a little bit over the four-hour mark, just so in case I edit It'll be the right. I gotta see how well the music cue played in the beginning and my outro. See how that works at the end. My feed hasn't changed much. Like I said, a couple of new things and a couple other things I wouldn't really dive into. They're not really content friendly. The lab-grown meat, that that could be something, too. I'm not saying it's plant-based, if I'm correct, because I think it's not exactly plant-based. But it's, like, totally synthetic, I think. But you've seen the plant-based uh, burgers for a while now in the supermarkets, and I'm sure they were in the specialty stores for a while. But hey, if it picks up and look if it tastes fucking good I don't give a fuck I'll be honest I want to go buy uh, the impossible whopper burger whatever the fuck it was not that I went to go buy it I'm sorry I was walking to the store I think I was with Justin and I was like oh if it's on sale I'll pick it up I didn't want to like five dollars for a fucking burger I was like I ain't buying it I just wanted to try it Although I did have a McDonald's Sunday, I tried to barter with him. Oh, it's raining again. I can hear the rain hitting the air conditioner. The wind is still fucking howling. That didn't even... I was wondering if that sounds like hell. But now it could be my imagination getting the better of me. We are... Uh, we are nearing the end, my friend. What song, what fucking song is that? The Doors? 
My only friend, the end. Yeah, I think it's the cause. We are rambling, getting silly. Alright, so Einstein's five favorite books, according to this person. That'll be something to end with. Albert Einstein, genius, most prolific, blah, blah, blah. Theory of relativity, you know who he is. Number five, Analysis of Sensations by Ernst Mach. Einstein's development of the theory of relativity was by his own admission influenced by the work of Ernst Mach, a 19th century Austrian philosopher and physicist. In his Analysis of Sensations, Mach wrote about the elusive nature of the human senses and the mutability of the ego. Mach's work also included criticism of Newton's theories of time and space. Another source of inspiration for Einstein's own ideas. Fuck off, phone. That thing fucking slipped. I had that thing on vibrate and mute. Jesus fucking Christ. Uh, Einstein's name hypothesis derived from Mach's principle. The idea that inertia is originated in interaction between bodies, which was an idea Einstein himself saw as instrumental. In 19... In a 1915 letter, he wrote to Moritz Schlick. Einstein explained what writers influenced his thinking coming up with a theory of relativity, saying, You have correctly seen that this trend of thought, positivism, positivism, was of great influence on my efforts, and specifically Emach and still much more Hume. You can look into Hume, he's a philosopher, whose treatise and understanding I studied with fervor and admiration shortly before the discovery of the theory of relativity. It is very well possible that without these philosophical philosophical studies, I would not have arrived, have arrived at the solution. So he's given, you know, paying homage to the people he wrote that inspired him. That's cool. Four, Don Quixote by Miguel de Cervantes. That I know. I'm not saying I've read it, but I know it. When I read that, Hmm. But that's not surprising. <laughs> Three, Ethics by Baruch Spinoza. Baruch Spinoza was a 17th century Jewish Dutch philosopher whose writings provided the groundwork for the Enlightenment and contemporary biblical criticism, Spinoza's Ethics, which is one of the fundamental works of Western thinking, describing full cosmology and a picture of reality while providing instruction for leading an ethical life. The book describes God as the natural order, with human beings as the modes of God. Everything that happens per Spinoza's thinking follows from the nature of God. And it's a pantheism. Spinoza, you'll find a lot of his his name come around a lot in uh In the philosophical writings in the circles. Two, a treatise of human nature by David Hume. Uh, Hume's real famous. By his own admission, this book by an 18th century Scottish philosopher that looked to understand the link between science and human nature had a big influence on Einstein. Hume's accomplishment of articulating a scientifically moral philosophy appealed to the physicist added the book's call to move from metaphysical speculation towards facts you can observe. Here was an also an important caveat to this. According to Hume, that observation alone cannot grasp the laws of nature. This implication had a profound impact on the development of Einstein's counterintuitive ideas. There you go. I'm going to butcher this fucking first one. I know it. Johann von Goethe's over your over the most perhaps the most sizable part of Einstein's large collection of books belonged to the German author Johann von Goethe. The physicist owned the collected works that he authored in a 
36 volume edition along with an additional 12 volumes as well as two volumes of the optics including a letter exchange between Goethe and Schiller another volume of Faust Einstein kept a bust of Goethe and was known to quote the writer to his German speaking assistants that's pretty interesting In a 1932 letter to Leopold Gasper, Kasper, Einstein wrote that he admired Goethe as a poet without peer, as one of the smartest and wisest men of all time. He added that even his scholarly ideas deserve to be held in high esteem, and his faults are those of any great man. Uh, if you're looking for more great books enjoyed by the world-changing scientist, it is known he also loved the brother... Karazmazov <laughs> and Isis Unveiled, a mystical track by the Theo so Theosophist Helena. Okay, so we got five books that Einstein liked and how they influenced him. That's pretty interesting. That put me over the four hour mark. It has now been four hours, three minutes, and 31 seconds since I started podcasting. We have a new record. I did it during a real windy, rainy, shitty Wi-Fi day. So this should be interesting to see how it renders and how many fuck-ups are in it. This is a breakthrough, people. The many a multitude of people who are listening to my voice. Thank you for joining me. I'm checking everything before I sign out. I want to thank everybody for joining me, for listening, for engaging me in the chat. I look forward to doing this more often, especially nowadays. You can check out my YouTube channel, the Deadly Addictions channel, my Discord. There are some links in the chat that I put in there. I have a Patreon, Teespring, even a PayPal button. Check it out. Join Discord. I am looking to gather a group I explained earlier, but I'll end with it also, to play Dungeons and Dragons online and Superhero RPG online. For the Dungeons and Dragons, I use second edition rules based on the expanded uh, skills and powers stuff. I forgot what it's actually called. Never fucking remember. And for the superheroes, I use the Marvel Saga system, which is a card system. It's like a uh, deck of fate. And you use a hand, like you would in poker, let's say. And you use that hand for your actions, and it gives you an idea of... Uh, what your day is going to be like because you'll have color coded cards that have to do with certain characters and attributes. So, if you're interested, leave a comment, get in touch. Uh, DMs are open. Contact me on Twitter at Addiction Master. People are savvy, you know what to do. I don't put them in my podcast or my streams often. But everybody knows what to do. Like, subscribe, throw buckets of money at me and, you know, share and fucking go out screaming to people. Oh, no, sorry. We got the isolation, but you get the idea. I'm going four hours and seven minutes. The 
Drop frame rates increase drastically. I'll keep that in mind. Try to piece together where it happened. And I know the times where I literally lose connection. Those that's without a doubt it happens. But when it loses it really quick, hardly any frames are dropped. And there's no error messages. Which is why I noticed a distinction between when I tried to stream live and I started trying to stream the game. I had lots of windows open. So I noticed a difference. So like some people have said in the chat, I've chalked this up to bad weather. I hope it was somewhat enjoyable and listenable to people. Uh, mostly practice. I'm getting my experience and a little bit of uh, stamina. This has been interesting. And before I go, I'm just going over things, seeing how long I can keep this going. But I'm checking over stuff, uh, stats and the health of the stream, those type of things, trying to keep a mental note, a little pad and a pencil. Try to keep notes and see if, uh, you know, if there's any... Um, Changes I want to mark down and notice, like, what is the biggest draw? Because at times I would open up stuff and make note of it. So if I'm going to open up two extra windows and I want to search an article, you know, I, I'm trying to pay attention to what that does. If I tried to open that site, like, what would that do? Those type of things, so. That's why I'm ending this in such a weird way. I'm just fucking pushing it now at the end of the stream. Oh, I hope people can enjoy this. And maybe if I get to edit it, I'll, I'll mess around with it. But mostly I don't bother with that stuff. I want these to be raw, real experiences, not too doctored and studioed up, if that makes any fucking sense. We have four hours and nine minutes of podcasting. It is 1.09 a.m. 5.9.2020. I am Joseph F. Elsis. This is the Deadly Addictions channel. Thank you, everybody. It has been a lot of fun. A little cold. I'll admit I got a little chilly there. I held out on the food and all that other stuff. So now I'm going to get ready and see if I could end with my outro song. It's not the whole song because I'll get fucking copywritten. But it allows me to test other aspects because what I can do is when I edit it, is go in and actually cut the actual audio, put it in if I need to. Let's see how this works. I'll try to queue it up. Now I'm noticing as I'm opening more windows and I'm because I've been streaming for so long, I get cache memory and stuff like that, you know. I try to keep everything clean and smooth running. We'll see, we'll see how that goes. Anyway, it was nice for you to join me. I look forward to doing this again. Goodbye to my Facebook friends, family, and anybody who came in. Hope you enjoyed it, got something out of it. I'll see everybody next time. Take care.